32 minutes, 21 seconds. Five second tone followed by a one second pause. You are listening to Space Boy Universe. Okay, gang, okay, let's go. Let's go. Strap in and prepare for launch sequence. Greetings and salutations. I'm Space Boy, and across from me is the lovely Sir Lana, and this is Space Boy Universe. It is September 29th, 2018, and we're on show number 3.01. That's right! Happy anniversary! We're in season 3, and I'll explain later as Serlana rolls her eyes in the back of her head. As always, follow us on Twitter. That's at the SB Universe. Follow Serlana at Serlana. Follow me, Space Boy, at Space Boy Music. Make sure to hashtag your tweets tonight with hashtag SB Universe and hashtag Space Cadets. In addition to Twitter, you can find us all over social media. Just search for Space Boy Universe. Hey, Space Cadets, you wanna, you're going to want to check out our YouTube channel. That's right, if I can get my act together. We do more than just a archive of shows there. There's video content from SB Music, video interviews, 2-Bit Gamers, and so much more. Hit that subscribe button, click that bell, and to be notified when new content is available. Uh, can't catch a show of the live? No problem. We always tell you you can take the SBU on the go with you via Spreaker, SoundCloud, iTunes, iHeartMedia, uh, and Spotify, man, uh, p- give me a moment here real quick. <sighs> because we love the broadcast. And on that magical note, let me bring in my lovely co-host, the rock, the center of my universe, the one that I appreciate that I've dragged her to her desk and locked her in chains, uh, the lovely Serlana. What has gotten into you? Oh, my goodness. Well, you I know. didn't even pay you off or anything. I mean... Um, you know, uh, I'm just all excited about the fact that, uh, uh, okay, so let me go ahead and start <laughs> the, so- the show off and explain Whoa, this to that. the audience real quick. We are in season three. Some of you think, or probably feel like you know, that, hey, haven't y'all been broadcasting like for four years? And yes, we have. And and I guess in my own convoluted way, I've always said that the first year was like our pilot episode. So it doesn't count. It doesn't really count because and I... And that makes I, me want to punch you in the face. I because had, you made me do all that work. I it had, doesn't count. I, I had to groom you and, and get you to where I you are. I could get up and walk out right now and never come back. And it would damage the marriage a lot, but mm. I could do it. The fact is that, uh, you know, we had to go through... I mean, you remember back then, uh, we got our start uh, and we started off doing YouTube. And, you know, we would do the live stream, uh, I guess. Figured we would get into that in detail after yeah, the break. So. But uh, it, it's kind the of history, relevant. Yeah, you know. but I, I'm ex- trying to explain the season thing. So that oh. first season. Or, it wasn't uh, on Spreaker, is what you're saying. Yeah, it wasn't on Spreaker. I felt like once we hit Spreaker, then that's when the first season started. And that's when we went. Still forward. makes me want to beat my head against a wall. Mm-hmm. Well, you shouldn't. Um, but uh, I it's know I know that uh, like that first episode, I I always hear K twenty eight laughing about it, uh, and, and I think and you needing to do laundry. <laughs> by now, only K twenty eight is amused by it. Well, we, and we can get into that later. Okay. okay. Well, anyway, so it's funny. That's uh, so for the record, uh, the third season starts tonight, and and we're so happy that everybody has come tonight to 
to hang out with us and you know we love all our space cadets so as we normally do during this time let's go ahead and hit the banter um Serlana, do you have anything over yeah, there yeah i do but mm -hmm. i did not know if i needed to clear everything out of the way for your latest upset Okay, since let's you mentioned it, ahead, let's go out. ahead and get into it. <laughs> that way I can just okay. chat while you're talking. Uh, as you know, um, uh, I've been, uh, I hate to say complaining or whatever about The Last Jedi, um, and that's when it kind of started, and Kathleen Kennedy and Ryan Johnson, and, and you've probably seen some YouTube videos out there uh, of me talking about this very issue. Well, you know, uh, there was a lot of rumor, a lot of scuttle, scuttlebug out there saying that uh, Kathleen Kinney uh, was going to be on her way out. And I said, in the old ways of, of saying things, don't let the door hit you in the tuchus on the way out. Well, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? She's not fired. And uh, I'm like, I'm totally blown away by the fact that she's still saying, staying. In fact, they, they renewed her contract for three more years years i mean how bad can you mess up star wars their cash cow over there at disney and and well, still keep a job let, let me ask because i'm sort of outside this how bad did she quote unquote mess it up what what was the mess up and what well, what happened to the, the big franchise one um uh, she's partly i mean you know okay there's a lot of meat here and potatoes to oh, get i'm sorry through. we yeah. should probably you should dedicate your own podcast to it <laughs> The thing is that I probably will do a video at some point, but the thing is that, um, you know, um, the buck should stop by, stop with the person who's responsible for that, that thing. You, you have Bob Iger come out recently and had this news thing and talk about, uh, you know, hey, I, I'm responsible for this. The buck stops with me, yada, yada, yada. I uh, didn't bring up um, Kathleen Turner. Is he Disney president? Yeah, he's the Disney president. But she's just president of Star Wars stuff. Uh, Lucas Films. Lucas Films. Okay. Yes. Um, and so, um, you know, basically, and, and that just reminded me of something else. Apparently, she's going into another project. Guess what she's going into? She's going into the next Indiana Jones movie that's supposed to be coming out. Is it going to star a woman this time? <sighs> that... You know, that, that's opening up another can of worms for me right now with all okay, this so stuff. We'll that, but so, let's stay focused here. But what happened? Was it solo? Is uh, that what upset no, everybody? What, well, what happened was the fandom, um, you know, didn't like The Last Jedi. And then all of a sudden, oh, well, yeah, okay. hold on, all, the, all of a sudden, you know, the uh, Disney people that were part of the, the Star Wars thing started calling the people that were complaining or having an issue with how the movie went down like for example you remember how they portrayed luke skywalker in that movie right well he was an old man well the fact is that he um was not the hopeful uh he was really beaten down and yeah defeated. exactly defeated and what that the heck happened to him yeah you know that was he not luke skywalker, luke skywalker so I try to get my mouth working there right now oh it was it was accidentally turning his nephew to the dark side that was it wasn't it that's anyway, what destroyed him anyway uh luke has always been portrayed as hopeful for the future and and so they that was just one thing out of several things uh you know uh, laura dern's character there was no it's need to for her totally unnecessary I agree they you. could have used uh, akbar and it so would have been more meaningful that movie had problems that the fans did not like right and there were the fans were trying to be constructive but what happens is you get people at disney calling the fans cry babies um that's not go, good yeah, to do to your fans it, ever you know, well any kind of business for that matter um, you know, calling them, you know, racist, calling them misogynist, uh, you know, for just, you know, take a list uh, of just different things. That's interesting. So they do this after The Last Jedi. Mm -hmm. Now here comes Solo with this, all well, its social justice warrior af stuff. Af well, it started with The Last Jedi. And as things progressed and the way the fans, the hardcore fans were treated, they said, you know what? We're not going to go to Solo. And, and then on top of that you know that we have issues with solo um because of uh, who they casted for mm -hmm. um for you know so, han solo yeah. and um and then some other interesting things about solo that, that came up closer as they got closer to the movie um so and what happens the movie flops uh they um i think they're they're about to make their money back just about to but still with rentals maybe 
No, yeah, with the purchase of of Solo, mm-hmm. and but um, so you have all that now. What really irks me is that uh, Bob Iger comes out in his uh, press release and he says we we put out too much and too quick and blah blah blah. And and, and the reality is, hello Marvel, Marvel puts out uh, like a high amount of quantity of stuff within and, months of each other. And, and and what does it do? It makes money. And and why does it make money? Because they have the fans invested in it. Um, they're they're quality, well written um, products, and and the fans are eating it up. Unlike Star Wars, which is not doing a doggone thing close to what Marvel is doing, and has the capabilities of doing it, but they really are pissing off the fans. So why are you, Space Boy, mm-hmm. bothered by her staying? What does this mean for you? What does it mean for me is that Kathleen Kennedy should go. That's what uh, I felt. That's where a lot of the other fans have felt that she has brought in this social justice stuff because she's uh, behind a, them e- calling the fans names. Even this of calling, uh, you know, there's a picture of her. The, the force is female, you know, putting gender onto yeah, the situation. Yeah, the force is the entire universe. It's not gender at all. It binds us. It, it surrounds yeah. us. Anyway, the thing is that um, she is is one uh, uh, of those people that are, are putting that situation where it's putting a wedge. And then, not to mention, you talk about Ryan Johnson. Um, he's the biggest buffoon of them, of them all. Um, he's a, a director. He's a director okay. of The Last Jedi. I need a I need a flow chart for this. I'm sorry. Can you make me one later with in Visio? Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll get Visio and um, you know PowerPoint and all that good stuff. God, it's dry in here. So at the end of the story is that Kathleen Kennedy got signed for a three more year deal at Star Wars. And so bend yourself over the table and mm-hmm. yeah. And so not you know this happened Friday, late Friday, right? Mm-hmm. Like hey, let's release the news at late during the day Friday, and then you know. We you know wait until the weekend dissipates all the negativity and then that's like of, getting fired on a Friday exactly so um, the, you know all the fans that I've seen all the sites you know I've already been through the sites you've heard me like playing video after video mm-hmm. of different yeah. things or actually I've seen the videos that are queued up on our YouTube. Uh, login mm-hmm. waiting for you to get upset about mm-hmm. so yeah. <laughs> I, I'll have some kind of video response uh, on YouTube about all this, and uh, because and I, was, I won't be involved in that. Uh, usually, <laughs> I'll when be I alone. when I do these videos, you're not involved anyway. So. No, because this is not something I care about. Anyway, so the thing is that at the end of the day, there will be a video out there. I'll talk, go into depth. Uh, I'm mad. I'm upset, but I'm not one of those man babies that are you know blah 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 <laughs> that, that you know Star Wars man is called. babies. Yeah, he's a what, baby man. Well, you know, recently we got uh, on one of our videos, uh, somebody put on there that I was a man baby and, and I was crying about it. And it's like, I'm not crying about it. I'm, You're commenting on I'm it. I'm commenting on it. And, uh, you know, uh, I, it was our first kind of uh, hate. Again, well, uh, emotional immaturity runs rampant in the world. Yeah. And so nobody has grown up mentally. I had to laugh at it because it was so funny. But, um, but yeah, expect a response out there on YouTube, and and you know we'll go from there. But at the end of the day, that's my Star Wars stuff, and I'm sticking to it. And I will say one last thing on this, and we'll, we will put it behind us. Yeah. Um, you had told me this in passing or over the phone on Friday on the way home from work. Mm-hmm. I was already home when you got home, and you, I was in the kitchen. I was cooking, and you came over to me, and I just stopped everything, and I walked over, and I and I, I grabbed you, and I hugged you, and said, "It's oh, it's gonna be okay, baby," and you're like, you're like trying to figure it out, and I'm like, "It's only gonna be three years," and you figured <laughs> out what I was talking about. I was like, I actually tried to comfort you because I know it was a big deal for you, but <clears throat> I really don't have a leg to stand on when it comes to making fun of you about this or Walking Dead because. I have my little obsessions, but I try to keep them very quiet and well, the, separate from you. The, the way, the reason why I'm so passionate is because a lot of this stuff is when I grew up on it. Yeah, Star Wars back in the '70s. Yeah, the things I'm passionate uh, about are more recent or, things. Um, you know, things in the '80s. You know, these are things mm-hmm. that mean a lot to me as a kid. And now that I'm an adult, I have money. Uh, Somewhat to, to, to spend on on these things that I love, 
and and then people are coming around and they're morphing it and perverting it and uh, I don't like yeah. it, you know. And yeah. then and then if I have something educational or um, something to say about the matter, you know, I'm not saying it uh, to sound like a, oh, I'm I'm just can a baby. Can you imagine? I have things I'm passionate about right now, but I have no one to talk to about. Really? And I have them buried. I have it buried deep. You never share anything with me. I'll sell something in passing because sometimes you're like, why won't you talk to me? I'm like, because you're not interested in anything I have to say. Uh, you know, that's sad because that's a not, lot of it's reading stuff. Well, you know, you're reading about lo robots in love or something like that. And Cause yeah. God forbid we talk about robots. Anyway. So um, anyway, can we put Star Wars to bed for tonight? <laughs> well, OK, I can't for tonight. I, I, I can let you segue into something else but uh, you know Star Wars is not uh, oh and let me just say, add to this <laughs> killing me um, and just because uh, I'm in a, uh, a bad relationship that seems like it's ending with Star Wars uh, I don't think that Star Trek can come snuggle up with me because you know I'm still mad at them there you go I am over any new Star Trek stuff movies or TV shows I'm not into it. I'm not watching it. But I still care about the core, which is TNG, DS9, and Voyager. And we'll talk more about some of that later next month because that will be our wedding anniversary on the 30th of next month. How long have we been together? God almighty. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mean legally or just knowing each other together? You can't even tell me how many years have you. I met you October 30th, 2004. So what do you want to go from there? But we didn't get married till 2006. We've been, what, married for 12 years? Yeah, but we've known each other for, what, 14? Yeah. Ish? 13-ish? And you, you know what? Uh, and here's my sad story, is that you're the longest person I've ever known that I've <laughs> been together with that and you know and you know why that is people and everything else you know the, I'm the uh, longest relationship he's ever had you know why apathy because it just takes too much work <laughs> to get divorced too much money too much time and too much work uh, and here we are okay so what else you got on the agenda well I saw this I didn't uh, I have my speculations about this mm -hmm. I don't know what's going on legally here no yeah. but this caught my eye Elon Musk forced to step down as chairman of Tesla but remains CEO. So I thought, is this because he vaped on Joe Rogan or smoked something? Uh, I think it was something else. But, but I, was I mean, thinking, I'm sure that could I'm sure that didn't help. But anyway, so he's reached a settlement and it's with the Securities and Exchange Commission. I'm guessing this is the government here. Mm -hmm. uh, they they, they uh, filed charges on Elon. Um, over his abandoned attempt to take Tesla private. So I'm guessing he wanted to make Tesla a private company. I didn't yeah. know it was public. He'll have to step down as chairman within 45 days and will not be able to become chairman again for three years. But he can be CEO. So I didn't know there's a difference between being chairman and CEO. I thought they're the same thing. But so the SEC charged um, the company, Tesla, with failing to have required disclosure controls and procedures relating to Musk's tweets. So they're upset about Musk's tweets, I guess on behalf of the company. They already agreed to settle that charge. Uh, both Musk and Tesla will pay separate $20 million fines. They'll be distributed to harmed investors under a court approved process. I'm like, well, what the heck happened in these tweets, you know? Uh, so. A lawyer will now oversee Musk's communications, including his tweets. So, makes me wonder, makes me wish I was paying attention to all that stuff. But, uh, so he's stepping down. And uh, they opened this investigation in August after C they announced, Tesla announced that on Twitter he was considering taking the company private to a share price of 420 Ha ha ha! <laughs> uh, that see, I wouldn't have believed that. I thought that was a joke. That's funny. Four hundred twenty million, I guess. Um, now I can't take anything seriously. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he tweeted he wanted to take the company private. Well, I guess you can't 
say stuff like that on social media. You have to, I don't know, maybe you have to vet it or something with your investors and whatnot. You can't just go around saying crazy stuff without approval from the people who are, you know, running or investing in your company. I guess I understand that, but uh, it just caught my eye, one, that he had to step down to two, that the transaction is 420. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so the Department of Justice still has an open investigation into his failed privatization attempt. And a number of the shareholders sued Musk in court for losses resulting from this alleged market manipulation. So I guess you could see that he was like trying to manipulate the market with that tweet. So mm-hmm. yeah, it is, it is cheaper to stay married, but uh, it depends on how much you're paying your therapist. Unfortunately, I do have one. Anyway, I also wanted to tell you this other thing that really, like, turned my head. A real head turner? California did something interesting. Okay. Believe it or not. I'm got my interest. What did they do? California just became the first state within the, with an Internet of Things cybersecurity law. Let me explain that. So their governor signed a cybersecurity law Mm -hmm. covering smart devices, meaning your TV, your cell phone, your tablet, your notebook, your computer. The bill is SB-327, and it was introduced last year into their state Senate. So it worked. Starting on January 1st, 2020, any manufacturer of a device that connects directly or indirectly to the internet must equip it with reasonable security features designed to prevent unauthorized access, modification, or information disclosure. If it can be accessed outside a local area network with a password, it needs to either come with a unique password for each device or force users to set their own password for the first time they connect. So it has to, that means no more generic default credentials for a hacker to guess. So what do you think about those apples? Hmm. That's pretty interesting, but uh, I guess we'll see how far it gets. And in, in their, their do you role. think that's something every state should have, or? Well, uh, I don't know. I'd have to. I'd have to review it more. If it it seems like it would fit for us, it says several, and it's what it's called the Internet of Things. So things that connect to the internet. Mm-hmm. Several of these kinds of bills have been introduced to Congress, but none made it to a vote. To set you know minimum security standards for connected devices, but well, I, I guess nothing's it made it through. So we're talking about a standardization, um, you know, of all devices that um, I guess connect to the web. Yeah, I, I I'd need to do some more research research on you that. You know about that? Well, how about this? Here's something you do know about a great uh, deal about is Star Amazon. Wars? Oh, okay. <laughs> We are not mentioning that word anymore tonight. Okay. Well, Star Wars, uh, not Star Wars. <laughs> Can go, you know, you take are. a flying leap is what I was trying to say. Amazon Four Star is a dream store for last minute gift givers. Well, I didn't know what that meant. I'm like, there are stores. Apparently, Amazon has physical brick and mortar stores. Not everywhere, mm-hmm. of course. They're called Amazon Four Star, meaning the stuff that's inside their store has ratings of four stars or more on their website from people who've actually bought these products. So they opened up another retail location, of course, in New York City because, you know, God forbid the South gets anything cool. Uh, This is the third one they've got in Manhattan. Now, they have Amazon bookstores, physical stores. I didn't know that either, but there's, you know. We read in Houston, too. Um, it's Wait. called the Amazon Four Star Store. Um, there are also sections for new and trending top sellers, like for books and whatnot, and where featured products. There are also some sections that where the feature, they have featured products that aren't meeting the four star. But uh, So the, the products in this store get changed out frequently. So it's not the same thing month after month. Mm-hmm. It's got 2,000 items on the shelves and on tables. They've been curated and picked by Amazon, which means 
Amazon's going and look at the reviews that products get and they're picking from the, you know, the, the ratings. Uh, of course, you know, these are all different companies and brands of these products. It's not just Amazon stuff. That's their brand. Uh, they have things, they have, you know, electronic devices, they have consumer electronics, they have kitchen stuff, homeware, toys, books, and games. So it's not just, you know, you're going in to get a Kindle or something. Mm -hmm. Um, there are so many items, even things like a dog DNA testing kit, uh, a generic gifts wall. If you're stressed about what to get a two-year-old, it'll, they'll take the guesswork out of it for you. So, um, they have products from startups, startup companies and gadgets. And it's just, it's more like, I think it's more like a showcase. Yeah. I don't know that you're buying products necessarily at the door. Um, of course, they have their own stuff like Alexa and Echo and, and Kindle. But they also have, you know, other big name brands. Now, what they're saying is you're not going to find a better space for trying out this stuff. Seeing has the same gadgets rarely work at your local Best Buy or Target. You know, if you go in there to look at something, it's going to work mm -hmm. so you can see what it's like. Uh, they even have some Apple branded products, but not much. But I think it's really interesting is, you know, there's a wall of Amazon basic cables like lightning cords and USB auxiliary cables, power adapters. They said that's really super handy. Um, now, this is the catch for some people. Just like Amazon Books, Amazon Prime customers pay the prime price when shopping there. Non-members have to settle for the more expensive list price or sign up for the free Prime trial. Prime is is uh, kind of pushed there, but they also uh, push free trials of Audible when you check out. Mm -hmm. And when you want, if you want to pay something from the store, you open up the Amazon app on your phone or and you scan a QR code that's shown throughout the store. It brings up another unique to you QR code that's linked to your payment info on Amazon. You, a cashier scans that code and you're done. So there's no, you don't pull out your credit card. You don't get out your checkbook. You don't give them cash. You, it's all done on an app. So there's no physical money being exchanged. But why can't we have one in Houston? It's not like we're chopped liver. True. You know, it'd be nice to have something like that down here. But it's just a matter of time before they take, like, uh, the Whole Foods grocery stores and start converting them into things like that. Hmm. And uh, so, you know, I think it's it, funny that you can get you can get products delivered to a locker, any anything on Amazon delivered to a locker if it will fit in it. But the locker is at a Whole Foods store. <laughs> See, if you want to buy a, a bag of underwear, you can have it sent to a whole your nearest Whole Foods store and you go unlock the locker. Hmm. There you go. Underwear. How tasty. Anyway, <laughs> speaking anyway, of which, it for me. we're at the bottom of the hour, Sir Lana. Well, so that worked perfectly. It, it worked fine and, and it's amazing how quickly time flies by when when you're, you're ranting like a crazy <laughs> lunatic <laughs> when we come back uh, a little uh, bit of history of space boy universe yes yeah, so don't touch that dial this is patrick stats four and you're listening to space boy universe You are listening to Space Boy Universe on the SVU Network. Explore the universe with Space Boy and Sir Lada. This is author Gordon Roof. You are listening to the Space Boy Universe. This is K-28, and I'm listening to Space Boy Universe. Hi, y'all. This is Lori calling from Texas, and I love listening to Space Boy Universe. Hey, this is Dave Cruz, host of Beyond the Strange, and you're listening to Space Boy Universe. This is Wendy. I'm listening to Space Boy Universe. Hey, y'all. This is Lorelai Jalil. I listen to Space Boy Universe. Don't you? Tell your mom and them I said hi.
Space Boy Universe. Here are your hosts, Space Boy and Sir Ronnie. Do, 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 do. I love that. Well, I should love it because it's, your stuff. it's my original music. And 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 I guess to give the audience a kind of a how did Space Boy Universe come into existence? Okay. Let's just stop typing. So <laughs> as we go back in time, uh, the year is nineteen ninety nine. And I've been writing. Holy crap, that's a long way back. It, it is a long way back. You know that. Uh, you know you can't have the universe without the music. Oh and, well, that's and, true. Because... And, and 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 let me get into the story. So this is a good chance for you to sit back and listen, and, and chime in every once in a while, Serana. I'll follow my nails. Um, it's not like I'm talking about The Walking Dead, but anyway. So um, back in 1999, um, you know, I was writing all this music. And then all of a sudden, um, this new uh, company had come out called MP3.com, where you could upload your music and you know sell your music, and um, and they would even produ- you know you could sell upload the artwork and then you'd sell it to people and they would ship it into it uh, on a CD, and it was all MP3s. So it was really cool. Uh, you know, I made some cheddar off of that, um, but the originally, you know, Space Boy was created um, from the band um, what was based on the music uh, of the Pet Shop Boys and David Bowie. Ba- David Bowie came out, came out with the song Hello Space Boy. Um, and uh, so I took the Space Boy name because I love David Bowie. Hello Space and, and I love the Pet Shop Boys. And, and, and so I love and, that particular song. Mm-hmm. So March, and, and that song really kind of conveys the feel of, of the music I wanted to produce. Um, and, and it's not like 
I, hey, boom, all of a sudden in 1999, I started writing music. Actually, I started writing music when I was probably about five. Um, started playing with the violin, and then my dad taught me how to play guitar, and yada yada. Uh, eventually, I was in orchestra, band, and, and the, the list goes on. But 1999, March 1999, I uploaded my first album, uh, which was called uh, Workshop. And it was spelled kind of like in the way of um, um, uh, craft work. Yes. And so, like, right behind me. Because I'm looking at yeah, yeah, the yeah. thing that you forced me to make. Yeah. Well, anyway, um, but uh, so that's the genesis of Space Boy music it was March 1999. So as the years went by, um, you know. just died. Uh, what? What? What just died? The years of the rock just died. Well, me and Susie. It's interesting you say that because I'm uh, you quoting know, I, Crocodile Rock. But um, <laughs> I had gotten to a point where I was kind of burnt out because I'd been doing it so long. You know, I just uh, had in the early days of Space Boy. You know, I was able to crank out like almost two albums uh, per year. Maybe That's because you were uh, single. Even more than that, I had time on my hands. Yeah, you're single. But anyway, so. Um, you know, I, I was like ready to hang it up, uh, and uh, so in about 2005, I believe it was, um, I started getting back into listening to you know like Art Bell, and Art Bell was on Sirius Radio, and then all of a sudden he decides he's going to go to um, you know internet radio because uh, Sirius FM was not working for him, and uh, so this new network came along called the Dark Matter Radio Network. Uh, which was really cool. Uh, it had some great stuff. It, it was in its infancy, infancy, and Art was going to make the move to that once his contract ended. Um, and uh, along the way, I discovered uh, an artist by the name of Jimmy Church. And um, I got into, you know, because since I was listening to the channel uh, on a pretty regular basis, I pretty much got into his program when it first started. And so uh, it was great because I was I was a part of the ground floor, the ground working, you know, if you will. And uh, it was a great chance to connect with somebody that was, uh, you know, himself a musician. And um, and then, of course, he was getting into the broadcast thing. And, and, and I really at that to me, I could see that he was going to go somewhere. I just knew it. I mean, I could see him eventually getting to coast to coast. Uh, but, you know. I had no idea um, what the future held for Jimmy, but it was great that he's ultimately now he's kind of a regular host on Coast to Coast AM. So at some point, um, uh, he invited me out to contact in the desert where we we met him and um, where <clears throat> that was an interesting time, wasn't it, Sir Lana? The, uh, oh, yeah. Mm. <clears throat> Excuse me. I had to drink some water. Each stroke is always entertaining. But the thing is that um, I got to see his little setup and doing a live broadcast. And I thought to myself, I could do something like this. I have all the equipment at home. And um, I've always wanted to do something, you know, behind the mic as well uh, and, and entertain the masses. And so I guess when we got back home and um, at some point, uh, I started experimenting, putting stuff together and the mics and everything. And I, I roped Sirlana into something that she didn't know what she was getting into at the time. If I'd have known then what I know now, there would be no Space Boy universe. Yeah. So, um, well, I don't know if it would. I'm still I, I'm, working to <clears throat> try to kill it. Too. I'm sure the tagline would probably be still the same. It's my universe and you're in it. Yeah, and, that's, and, that was really... <laughs> egotistical and yeah, sort of everybody, passive aggressive. Yeah, it, there were a few people that made me feel guilty about that, but it was a, it was all in good humor, you know. I I mean, you know me. Uh you know, I say things like that uh, just to be funny. Uh and and then of course you always come back, well, when it's funny I'll laugh, but Well, I will. <clears throat> so <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm just getting all excited about telling this story. You do have a drink over there, right? Yeah, I do. You have plenty of liquid, right? Yes, I do. Okay, I'm going to make sure. For, for this first half hour. Okay. So I got her roped into it, and I said, just sit down. We're going to just going to pre-record something, and, you know, and... I thought you were going to take me out <laughs> of the recording 
So it would sound like you're just talking without being questioned or anything. So, And, and I kind of sold it that way in the sense that you would be like a producer behind the scenes. That and- is sneaky, underhanded, and wrong in every way. And if you have if anyone out there criticizes me, you have a problem with me being here, you don't like me, you don't like my voice, please email spaceboy at spaceboyuniverse.com. Let him know how you feel. I'm more than happy to step down. You know, everybody likes you, Solana, even with the accent. But there too. are books to read. Yes, but there are masses to entertain. So um, the fact is that uh, before, you know, after doing the contact in the desert, seeing what Jimmy was doing and thinking, I could probably do this. Um, also, my father-in-law was living with us. And um, every time we would get together and we would drive somewhere and we'd go like to dinner or something with him, um, he would be laughing in the back seat at us. And so, well, we entertained him. Yeah, and that's that's another point that where I was like, I think that we could entertain the masses. I mean, we're just enough funny together that uh, you know you you put me in my place. I uh, you know, and you laugh at my misery. Especially when I'm bleeding from my forehead. And <laughs> no. see, you're laughing over there. <laughs> you just got to mention it in Mexico. Right. So uh, the thing is that I knew that we could entertain the masses. And so sure enough, uh, around um, September 28th, uh, we we kind of went. 2014 or 2015? Yeah, 2015. 2015. We uh, went live on the, uh, the YouTube uh, for Google Hangouts. And and that's when this whole mess started. We did the pilot episode, which I, I kept Solana, to be honest with you, a lot of times I kept her in the dark. I uh, didn't want to tell her exactly, oh, yeah, this is not live. Or uh, Well, ri- originally the initial show was l- sometimes live and sometimes pre-recorded. But we, then we got into a routine of doing it live. And that's why that first season, or I could see, here we go, first season, uh, was a kind of a pilot episode of or pilot season, if you will, of Space Boy Universe. And so that brings us to the point where here we go. Over the next three years, uh, we've been doing this thing every Saturday night at 9 p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time live. Um, and I mean, we've had a few shows where we've taken some nights off, but there's always been a consistency of having a show out there like a best of. Uh, even on the nights when we're not live, there's something here. Even if we're not, yeah, we're not live here. Yeah, we all we're always thinking about the space cadets, and so you know, um, you know, we just kind of hammered things out, um, and uh, and and that's my story. That okay, I like now to tell. get my side of the story. Oh my goodness! Okay, here here comes. So on that day, September twenty eighth, twenty fifteen, he's like, I want to record a. A podcast. Now, a podcast is something that gets recorded, and it's not live, and you just edit it or not, and then you 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 upload it somewhere. So, uh, oh yes, he does, but not for the reasons he wants me to laugh at him. K twenty eight. In case you're wondering. And now I'm curious. Um, what he's... So, I said, well, I don't want to be seen or heard. You know that, right? He's like, yeah, but you know, just, just 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 record this with me, and I think he led me to believe that he would edit out all the parts where I was speaking. And I said, well, what do you want to talk about? And so I think we decided on our top five or top ten NASA conspiracies, which I thought was a really good mm-hmm. topic. Yeah. And he says, well, you'll have to do a little research. Well, what that means is you do the research. I'll just comment on it, setting thus setting a pattern I did not know that was coming up. So we did that. I had fun doing the research, and we, we discussed it, but it was pre-recorded, and I was talking to him like I was just talking to him, like it's him and me, like he was going to go back and edit out anything that didn't fit or was unprofessional, and so that's why you heard me if you heard this if you ever heard this i don't think he has you know zero zero one posted anywhere but that's why i say to him on this pot the podcast i don't have a lot of time i'm doing laundry i gotta go get this stuff (laughs) out of the dryer and that's why it sounds weird because i'm just talking to him yeah we're having a conversation we're just having a conversation i didn't 
I either forgot or just figured that he would take it out. Mm-hmm. I mean, he left everything in. A quick note here is that uh, um, a lot of the stories that uh, Serlana ends up researching, I've already kind of already heard it before, but I like mm-hmm. to get her point, and now she's making it like, yeah, snap, snap, wiggle my head. Anyway, the point is that uh, I enjoy what you come up with because it's like, okay, you came up with that. Oh, hey, I didn't think about that one. Or, oh, yeah, I heard about this on such and such. And and then the fact that we do a free form kind of talking back and forth, it, it just accents the point well, of, of the conversations we've had in the car with your dad and he laughs and blah, 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 blah. And yes. There are, now we get, so that's sort of the history of it all. And we get into the part where, hey, I wonder if we could get guests on here and interview them. <laughs> well, I learned a lot about people. Um, I am not a people person. And any given moment, any given time, any given day, if you ask me, I don't like other people. <laughs> Especially if I'm in the store and I'm or I'm driving, I don't like anybody. So, and it gives me anxiety to the point where I have to take medication for it. Not to like people, but to, mm-hmm. to deal with my not liking people. So, I was like, I can't interview people. I don't. I am almost a shut-in with all that I do have to go to a work, to a job, but I don't do well talking to people. I don't know how you interview them. I know not to ask stupid questions. I know not to ask the obvious questions. I, I know not to make a fool of myself. That's, but that's the best I can do. But like, so I was like, so would you be doing an interview? Like, I'll do the research and give you the the (laughs) info on that person. If they read a book, I'll give you my cliff. I'll read the book and give the cliff notes. But I can't talk to people. I'm going to step back when you do that. Well, that didn't happen. Well, because, you know, I was looking at it from the perspective. uh, um, I could probably do a show, but I don't know how, how interesting that I could convey the show and I needed somebody to, to offset me in the sense of, of somebody that knows me well and to put me in my place when time comes to put me in my place. Just, if only you had friends. That would be so nice if you the, had friends. The, the thing is I'm so busy between the real job and, and my fantasy job, mm-hmm. which is Space Boy Universe, uh, you know, uh, doing that. Now, the thing is that, you know, you say you learn so much. Uh, with I each have. each time when we've gone along this road on building the the, the studio, um, I had to figure out okay how do I you know have guests call in or how do I figure out the phones for um, you know and the, he the did he's figured out every every connection every piece of equipment everything that runs this show and Space Boy Music he's figured it out and put it together all himself without any. Well, you know, internet, you know, mm-hmm. looking up that stuff, but it's just experiment and moving things around and mm-hmm. adding equipment, adding and, equipment. Yeah. He's, he is the IT guru. So eventually I got us to a point where, you know, where we're at now, but you know, that learning process has been extraordinary. And, and, and although, you know, you're right, You've you got a pretty sweet setup for I, amateurs. I, I know you do a lot for the universe you know you do a lot of the research you you, you do uh, a lot behind the uh, in front of the mic and but as He's far the as tech guy though yeah but the behind the scenes if something goes to hell in a in a handbag it's up to you yeah i've got to get everything back on running uh, you know so uh, that's how we're kind of balancing each other out not mm-hmm. to say that uh you know i don't have my two cents to say which mm-hmm. it works out because you do come to me and say oh wh- what do you think about that or well, what is your opinion about that? And I guess I've become more of the opinion, the editorial, um, and 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 I guess and in, and in, in as we discuss further on, what we're going to be focusing more on the universe yeah. coming up. You've been doing some hail mary maneuvers with social media. Oh yeah, that's I've, really paid off with our YouTube channel, which I know you'll get into more later. Later, yeah. Um, that's been amazing. It's been so good to the point where. At one point, I ran in here and I said, "Are you posting nude somewhere? Why are we getting so many followers on all these different platforms?" So I had to make sure he was doing legal stuff up here. But um, he's doing really great uh, today. I did a not that anybody cares. That's fine. 
I did a ton of back in you can't see it stuff to the website mm -hmm. where I was making include files and posting some JavaScript so I could if I change the menu I only have to change one file and upload one file and it replicates across all pages that have that script included um, I did you know a couple of uh, maintenance things getting the phone number correct on the website and the phone number you're calling in tonight is on the website upper right hand corner there's no reason for you not to know about it so you know going back to what this half hour is focusing on Solana is the the beginnings of space boy universe mm -hmm. um, you know uh, how do you feel I mean I think, I do have a, a section called what I like about it yeah but as far as what I was gonna ask you is do you feel that your confidence has has been boosted uh, I, mean, I feel more confident when it comes to talking to strangers on over this well you even call it the phone the internet mm -hmm. whatever um, if I'm prepped for them mm -hmm. and I know but you have gotten or maybe you maybe you were always like this and I just didn't know but you are amazing especially when we're on location shots yeah. at interviewing people on the fly that we've never met before mm -hmm. that is really impressing like when we're at comic palooza or mm -hmm. maker fair uh, that was great. The NASA interview we just did at Comic Con was just phenomenal. I thought mm -hmm. because you you already know you have an interest in you know you kind of already know about it. It's but um, talking to strangers and interviewing them, I would have never. Oh no! I, I would have. Ne you know me enough well, well up to that point. And 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 it's funny you bring that up. Is that uh, there's a part of me that uh, has a slight anxiety of talking to strangers and. Well, um, in this and, way, but, you do get to prep, you know. But but the flip side is, and, and I'm not saying this, well, I wish we could be just like you. You're just Mr. Perfect, you know, uh, and, and what you say to me. But I'm only going to say that when I'm upset with you. <laughs> I'm not going to say that right now. But I'm kind of liking you right now. In order to combat that, <laughs> what I personally do is I just, I just, I'd say it I just dive into the pool. <laughs> and that's that's how I try to confront that. And yes. then when we're on location, and then, uh, you know, I was in theater arts when I was in high school. And so it, 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 it there's a part of me that uh, I got into theater arts to combat uh, being shy and, and, you know, and you'd never think that dealing with me out in public. And, uh, but I just, I, it's, it's something that I've worked on and confronted and, and uh, tried to tap into being charismatic and and i generally do there's a part of me that it, it is very in tune when i'm talking to somebody face to face yeah but you're you're much more naturally comfortable mm -hmm. doing that even if you you feel like you're not but compared to me mm -hmm. i want to run oh. screaming away from everything yeah i know you're very you know you'd be you're happiest just reading a book and and being 10 million miles away from somebody. i have an entire world a universe of things inside my own head that mm -hmm. I can go visit mm -hmm. and be perfectly happy, <laughs> you know? So mm -hmm. that's the, but I was going to tell before the break, some little quick behind the scenes things is yeah. sometimes we fuss at each other during True. the breaks yeah, because yeah. like you're talking over me or you're talking too fast. We got to stretch this out and <laughs> give me time to respond. And I'm like, I'm not a freaking professional. You can't get mad at me for not doing, knowing how to do this. And, but here we are four years later and I'm still doing it mm -hmm. I don't know why I talk so fast when I know we've got plenty of time for certain things like I've only got this many pages of notes and I need to stretch we've even developed sign language uh, uh, to you know like uh, no not that <laughs> sign language, sign language. <laughs> not that sign language <laughs> Sir Lana but anyway so um, I gotta find some more and uh you know we have our uh our, you know our, our you know me as space boy because you know i've taken the persona of being the musician and and, and then you've you, been space boy a long time and, yeah. and i had this other name for a long time way before i met you and you never that was my yahoo name and now i have to ask you if if given the chance to name yourself would you have named yourself something else because i kind of pushed that i don't name know what, on, upon you well because i'd had it was that yeah i emailed you mm -hmm. we met through yahoo personals by the way yeah. and we'll discuss that next month but i i must have emailed you under 
the Yahoo email, which is the Solana. Now you've told everybody your email. By well, the way. it's not a big mystery, but the thing <laughs> is, I'm one of the few people that have just one word mm -hmm. email. There's no things in front of it. There's no numbers behind it. There's no dashes or underscores. It's just Solana. I can assure our audience. That's that how long I I've do had not it. have Spaceboy at Yahoo.com. No, he doesn't have that. You know. But, uh, You've probably got used to seeing me as that name mm -hmm. before you ever saw my real name. Well, I thought it was a great name, uh, and um, and then you know, despite getting you know you, to know your your real name, <laughs> um, I thought, hey, that would be a great um, you know a stage name like you know I'm using Space Boy, and. Um, uh, the Yahoo is just spam now. It's all just spam. Yeah, that's where I hard to check it. Yeah. I hardly check it. So you want to talk to me? You need to talk to me through Solana at SpaceBoyUniverse dot com, or I'm not going to see your email. Um, and then, of course, you know you can always uh, contact me contact space, at SpaceBoyUniverse dot contact at SpaceBoy. That's the general. Then I have SpaceBoy at SpaceBoy. Mm -hmm. I have access to all SpaceBoy Universe email. He has access to all SpaceBoy Universe email. Mm -hmm. Either one of us can check all for yeah so it, it, nothing should go to the wayside if you're sending mail you know we try to be and no i would not on, know what you know, other name that. to call myself um that's what see that's what i was gonna I, ask i don't wasn't there... i'm just not good with persona and not being me i just did it because my real name is hard for some people to pronounce and it's even harder for people to spell so i just mm -hmm. bypass that by saying Solana. E, e, e. And I wish, I, you know, I I try to remember your name uh, through a Neil Diamond song. And that's all I'll say on that is... What a tragic, horrible way <laughs> to remember somebody's name. <clears throat> but, um, all right, Solana, I guess we're at the top of the hour. Um, this is a great chance to take a break. And, yeah, uh, it should have been Space Girl, but I'm not going to be a girl forever. You know, and, and if... Maybe if I thought about it in in, in the hindsight, you would space have been space gal. Space, yeah. That so would what? Work. Are you getting all space girl is so demeaning and? Well, it's like Pet Shop Boys. You know, Graham Norton goes, mm -hmm. goes. Well, now you're in your late fifties. Um, I regret the name boys, and they're like, no, because they're so dang cool. Mm -hmm. so. Well, I, you know, I don't regret using the name Space Boy. I mean, it's uh, you're always going to be male yeah, boy. Yeah. So anyway. Uh, so let's rock and roll out into this break, and when we come back, uh, we'll talk more about Space Boy Universe and, okay. and all that good stuff. You are listening to Space Boy Universe on the PAUK Radio Network. Explore the universe with Space Boy and Sir Lana. Hey, Sir Lana! What? If Space Boy Universe was cheese, would you eat it? Uh... Come on now, it's a simple question! Maybe? SpaceBoyUniverse.com <laughs>
You are listening to Space Boy Universe. Here are your hosts, Space Boy and Sir Ron. Sorry, I'm adjusting myself here. Uh, I just stuffed myself with two cupcakes. That's what I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. With one. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Mm, I love those cupcakes. Anniversary cupcakes that Mm. were bought, but they're still very, very good. So, uh, where do we go now? You know, (laughs) first off, Sir Lana. Hmm? What? We're back. Mm -hmm. And... um, so you notice it's my anniversary. I can I, eat a cupcake. I, I ate my cupcake during the break. Oh, whatever. I'm not a professional. And um, you know, so you know, let's truck along. Well, before we get into you know the meat and potatoes, you know, um, what I like about Space Boy Universe, what I do like about doing the show, it's given me the opportunity to learn a topic or a subject or about a person that I knew little to nothing about. And be able to discuss it with you and with others and get their intake and sometimes being able to take their calls and those people can talk to us or if we have a guest, sometimes they've been able to do that. That has been an amazing journey. I Like I said before, the concept, the idea of interviewing <laughs> a stranger terrified me. I'm not as bothered by it now. I do have, as you asked me, do I feel more confident about it? I do feel, I do, I do feel a little bit more, you know, I've got some experience under the belts, so to speak. So, you know, I've got some confidence about that. So, uh, the other thing I've learned is sometimes we'll get a guest on and they'll say, Sure, I'll be on, but I can only give you like 30 minutes because I don't have that much to say. It's like, I'm happy to talk to you, but I don't really have that two to three hours of of topic to talk about. And then we get them on here, two hours have gone by and they don't even know it. Right. That is fun. It's like, it's over? It's over? Yeah. That's it. Get out of here. Get out of here. Go on. Ferris Bueller says, go home. What are you still doing here? (laughs) So, you know, some of them said, you know, I can only talk 30 minutes because I don't really have that much to say. And I'm like, we sucker them into it. Mm. Uh, I I, I guess I'm really good at that. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's called being prepared, having questions ready, knowing that person's, where if it's a book or if it's, if they're a researcher, if they're a YouTuber, I mean, knowing all their, Mm -hmm. knowing them. And having things ready for them, but you know, and and I hate to sound like I stole something from somebody. I'm just, uh, you know, I always I, steal from the greats. I, I approach, uh, you know, whenever we have a guest, you know, like, hey, you're coming over. We're just going to have a conversation, you know, see where it goes, and at the end, we'll be friends and we'll learn each other uh, about each other, and you know, the life will be perfect, right, Solana? <laughs> You know, I'm telling her on the purpose, but I'm asking her, her because she's got a big old cupcake stuffed in her mouth. Sure. Yeah. Whatever you say, dear. But no, I mean, doesn't that generally how our, you know, when we have a guest on that, uh, that's when we have how a guest personal? on, it doesn't matter who it is, what they're talking about. It's always better. Mm-hmm. The show's always better because it's not just us talking. Mm-hmm. So I've always liked it, even if we don't have a guest, but I always like it when people call in, um, some of them don't call in ever would be nice but i understand some people are shy maybe some people don't feel like they have anything to say but let this be on our anniversary let me encourage you if you've never called in before we're your friend we're here to raise you up we're not here to tear you down we're not here to interrogate you this goes for guests too um we want people to know how smart and awesome you are well let's so um, do that but did you finish off you know what what you like about space well universe? um so i like i like it when people call in and the last thing and i know you're, you're rolling your eyes out there and you're like oh you're only seen it because you're married him but honest to god's truth i felt this way before i married him before we were dating i love this man's music i love space boy music i get to hear it during a break i get to hear it you know when i the rare times i go back to listen to one of these shows for some reason or other mm-hmm. Um, yeah, 
that's some of the things I like about it. And the only thing I was going to say about, you know, interviewing people is every now and then we will get a compliment from the person we interviewed. And that's just like warm fuzzies right there. Mm -hmm. Uh, I guess, uh, you know, what I like about it is that um, uh, it gave me kind of like the Phoenix. And you know what the Phoenix is all about, right? Mm -hmm. Sri Lanka, Mm -hmm. the bird that rises from the ashes. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, it it gave me an extra oomph uh, of space boy energy, if you will, to continue on to try something new, but still keep the same. And, and it's really worked out because, you know, it's uh, given me the opportunity to still work on music and not necessarily be the focus. And um, and then plus, you know, we get to hang out. And, and this is going to be sad. It, it's, it's a chance for me to spend quality time with you. <laughs> that is the saddest thing I've ever heard. Uh, because most of the time she's oh reading a book God. and stuff. And, you know, I, I've said this before to you and I've said it to you many times and i've said it to you recently as, mm-hmm. as this week maybe i feel so bad for you <laughs> because you made this conscious decision this effort to marry me and i'm just like <laughs> i'll be there when i'll be there <laughs> it's just you know i didn't realize the whole marriage thing meant you know sometimes you got to hang out in the same room with them and talk to them mm-hmm. all things i should have taken into account but like you said, we do have this. Sometimes we watch stuff together. Um, oh, no, wait, I'll get into that later. After we've gone through some of the show stuff, I'm going to get into some of the things we've learned or experienced or mm-hmm. done this year. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily the whole show, but for 2018. Um, and it has to, it ties in with YouTube stuff. So uh, the only other thing I was going to say about this particular spot in the show was the things that I don't like. I hate that I don't have enough time to devote to the research. I hate that I don't have enough time to contribute more. And I hate that I have to have a real job to pay for things. The hurdles that we have to go through to produce Space Boy Universe, um, you know, we have day jobs. I mean, Sometimes you know. we have to say, well, tonight we can't do call-ins because we don't have the funding to this month. <laughs> so... That's why sometimes we have call in, sometimes we don't, is we just can't afford it. These are some of the challenges of, of running mm-hmm. the show. Um, like, for example, uh, I got laid off uh, uh, what 2016. Was it? two years ago. Mm-hmm. And uh, I really worried we that. We thought we were going to have to kill the show we, we for thought, a few months. We thought we were going to have to kill the show, yes. For at and, least three or four months. However, we managed to survive that. And, you know, uh, it's been kind of like a. a unbelievable in the sense of how we've kept the show going you know um we've survived with no sponsors um you know when you go to the uh um i guess the home page for uh, space boy universe you see those pictures of people that are on our main page um those are people that we've promoted and not asked for any money mm-hmm. or you know for advertising or anything because we believe in those people and we wanted to put them um out there also we think everyone that has supported us, I mean, hardcore since the beginning, mm-hmm. and, you, and you see that list of people at the bottom of our web page. Um, and, uh, you know, we could not have done a lot of things without those people. Um, and we appreciate them. We love them. And we can't say enough good things uh, to promote them. But, but um, you know, it's just they've been awesome. Um, you know, people like uh, Solaris Blue Raven. Um, a big supporter of our show and loves us to death, and we love her. Um, uh, Patrick Spohr, uh, a fan of the show, uh, we appreciate him. Um, Bev yes. and uh, our Bob, marriage counselor, yeah, Bev. Bev and Bob, and um, uh, you know we love you to death. Uh, they follow us the show, uh, and ultimately, I cannot leave this man out. K twenty eight, one of the nicest persons uh, I've ever had the opportunity to meet in person. Um, and, and it always cracks me up when I He's hear He's very from, grateful when you take him out to get some Tex-Mex. Uh, one thing that always kicks me into overdrive is that uh, um, when he said, uh, yeah, yeah, it's like watching the show live. <laughs> that was too funny. We were, we were at this restaurant and we we're in a booth and he's sitting opposite us. And it's, it's, it's like having a front row seat to the live show. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Like, well, what you're hearing is basically our relationship. That's mm-hmm. our marriage. 
We just happened to be recording it, you know, and that's why he was going to start recording our conversations in the car. I'm like, oh, dear Lord. Now I'll be terrified to say anything. But mm. some of the, I'm talking comedy gold happens when we're having a conversation in the car. Mm -hmm. That whole Klingon thing was that killed me. Yeah. The so, recent one, so. Yeah, so um, but yeah, great people. Um, Laundries are on Sundays, Kay. That's why you don't hear anymore. And uh, oh, he's talking about sound bites. Sorry. Right. Uh, so, at the end of the day, it, it's been an amazing three plus years to get where we're at now, and and of course, I look to the future and and I I, I know what I want to do. Um, I only hope that I can do it, and and with each time we do a show, that's another one in our pocket and brings us a step closer to the next season um, of shows and. Oh, just real quick. Uh, and so w when I started doing the seasons, uh, I started labeling them oh, like God. it'd be season one. And if, if you Here look at the title. Here comes more convoluted logic. So season one, you can tell what season you're on by looking at the, the number. So it would be like three. If you know. So we're in season three, and this is the first show. So season 3.01. And that's how you read that. So that's when you know what what episode of that you're on in the season. I encourage you to get your online community college degree before you <laughs> try to attempt to read the show titles for Space Boy Universe. Um, but um, anything else you want to add to uh, about, about, you know, that or? Um, I don't know. Do we want to go into this now or? I don't know what you have the notes over there. Well, so I'm just kind of. I've taken our six categories. Yeah. And I've taken each one and put like, I've got five spots for each category of things that I really stood out to me since the beginning of the show. Mm -hmm. And we could discuss them if you can recall them. Mm -hmm. But do we want to get into that now or each 30 minutes do? Well, Two just, for each 30 minutes? You know, just pick a, a direction. Okay, so I we mean... start with history. History is one of the six topics. I'm actually going in alphabetical order. History, French science, gaming, music, pop culture, technology. That's why that's listed like that, just alphabetical. So history. Now, these are just my personal favorites. That does it. It's not a commentary on any guests or any certain topic or any friendships or loss of friendships. It's just the ones that I enjoyed personally that left an impact on me. Space Boy, you probably have your own. You may... You're free to disagree. You can put your own in here, too. So, do you want me to go five to one or one to five? Um, one is always the big reveal, yeah, so right. that's how I like the... the, the okay, so number five, uh, history topic. Our, my fifth favorite is... I'm going to cheat on a lot of these. <laughs> Both shows I did on women's history. Mm -hmm. Because I tried to pick women I had not heard of before... Or that I'd heard of in passing, but I didn't know enough about. I didn't do your usual suspects. And, and before you reveal that, I, I want to point out that um, this show. I just revealed it. <laughs> well, I mean, beyond that, um, is that, um, you know, this show has been pro women. We talked well, about. Well, it's not been anti women. No, definitely. Uh, what I'm saying is that. Uh, uh, we've talked about great women in history. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about uh, history, uh, like for example, um, uh, Amelia Earhart. Yeah, talked about her, mm -hmm. um, and then of course, you know, we, t you know, grouped a bunch of women that may not have been known or heard of, and said why they're uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, they were important. Why that you need to know them? Yes, needing to know. And, them. and so it's not like oh, and then I bring this up is that. Uh, whenever you hear me talk about uh, you know the anti you know you know anti Social women justice and, warrior stuff, I don't have a problem with women. I love women, um, and uh, I want women to be believe me. If he had a problem with them, I would not be married to him. I would not stay married to him. <clears throat> so you know, and that's just what I wanted to put my spin on that. So yeah, those are you know, those are good episodes. And they and I like the, the learning about the different women that you came up with, mm -hmm. and uh, that I hadn't heard about. So, and okay, okay, so number four in the history topic, uh, let me try to say this name, Doctor 
Osmanagich. I think that's pretty close. And the Osmanagich per- yeah. with the guy who discovered the Bosnian I mean, pyramid. pyramid. Now, that was pretty epic as far as an episode was concerned. Pl- one, one, we had to get up early on a Saturday to pre-interview him, but oh my God, was it worth it. Mm-hmm. Um, I asked him something that I have been thinking about, you know, off and on throughout, when you talk about science and mm-hmm. faith and all that stuff, I asked him, does he think there could be ever a possibility where science and faith, religious faith, can exist and make sense together? And and I loved what he had to say about that. And if you and I'm like, I'll tell you what he said because you have to go back and listen, go back and mm-hmm. find the thing in our, our archives. But you, you don't remember, do you? Uh, he uh, he said yes, but and he expounded on it. But he's <clears throat> my gosh, that man was smart. Smart, smart, smart. He even had his own company Mm -hmm. that he created here in Houston. Mm -hmm. He's an entrepreneur. He's an archaeologist. And I loved the fact that he was just like an honest guy who made a discovery and isn't trying to capitalize Mm -hmm. on it. He just wants the world to see and know and experience. And there's these Egyptologists that have been keeping these deep dark secrets about the pyramids in Egypt and they hold on to it and they control it like these mafia bosses. They only want us to know so much and they're so snotty about it and they don't want anybody else coming in like those aren't pyramids and he's made all these discoveries about it and he's got volunteers from all over the world, regular people coming in and helping out. And see, you know, he, he, I always bring up Jim Mars um, into the conversation about when it ca- when it's about the search mm-hmm. for um, knowledge truth, yeah. and truth. Um, and, and he definitely falls into that category of, hey, look, I just want to show you the evidence. You draw your own conclusions based on the evidence I show you. And this is, you know, uh, it, it was a fascinating. But those know, guys, you know, the big names in archaeology, which is more Egypt. Egyptian archaeology Mm -hmm. is that they're so dismissive. They're Mm -hmm. like, nobody's got pyramids but Egypt or, you know, up there. And and that's not true. That's not true. The fact, you know, they were all put across the, some of them looked different, some of them like stepped, like, you Mm -hmm. know, like a ziggurat, but that's still a freaking pyramid. Right. It, someone got this idea to build this shape of a building all over the planet at one point in time or another. How did they know to do that when they could not communicate with each other? Mm -hmm. These are questions you need to ask. Maybe you don't have an answer, but you need to ask these questions and don't let anybody tell you what it is without you doing your due diligence and research. And he made me think about it. I mean, sure, those questions, maybe they're in the back of my mind, but Mm -hmm. I never put them to the front of the mind and go, oh, well, how did these people know to do that? Mm -hmm. And when there's no Internet, there's no social media in the year 54 B.C. or whatever, um, they all got the same idea. But that one, that really stood out to me, and I'm so glad that we were able to talk to him. And that was that a was, recommendation from Solaris Blue Raven. <laughs> it was worth getting up early to do that interview. Yes. I'll do. I'll get up early for you if you're and, worth and, it. And I believe we still did the show live. And we just... We just put that little, ex, we, we put that play, little snippet in yeah, there. Yeah, we played. Well, it wasn't little, but we put, took our breaks and, you know, and comment, commented along the way. It was but, a live show, and we took the pre-recorded mm-hmm. and stuck it in mm-hmm. there. Yeah, it wasn't like we just set the recording up and played it and but you know we still participated in that show that that was a really good show yeah because space boy is sophisticated and intelligent enough to <laughs> pre-record put the mp3 drop it into the show and then yeah anyway i just enjoyed the episode it was good number three in the history category uh, this is this year i believe mm-hmm. and you're like why are you putting this under history it's really kind of fringe well no because i'd say 80 percent of it is historical fact Maybe 20% is conjecture. We don't know. But that is the Laurel Canyon conspiracy about how the FBI put LSD out there deliberately. And I can see where you're, you're going with to the history create this on hippie that. culture. I guess, you know, when it's uh, when we do, it was about, when we do conspiracy, I usually drop it into that other category. Yeah. Well, a lot of this was factual until mm-hmm. you get to the Laurel, till you get to the part where, well, did 
the FBI or CIA, CIA, excuse me, did the CIA supply these drugs to the hippie community on purpose uh, and then created fake drug raids and as a part of this whole wanting to make sure people who protested the war looked like a bunch of losers who took drugs and did, you know did the conversation ever gravitate in that particular conversation about um men who stare at goats we might have um uh, i know you mentioned that during research week mm -hmm. but i don't recall I, I, was I just, saw that was, movie and I did not understand it. It just popped in my head. Anyway, go ahead. But anyway, so I, why I picked that is because I enjoyed the research. I was passionate about the research and trying to find, trying to find things to uh, cite. And it was fascinating to me because this topic was something I'd only heard about within like the last five years or less. Because, you know, I was born in the 70s, so that was before my time. You know, the hippie culture and Woodstock and all that stuff. And, and you're not a big fan of the hippie oh, culture. God, no. Most of the music just grates on my nerves. <laughs> if you are, that's fine. Just don't expose me to it and don't make me talk about it with you. But if you are, cool. Just, just keep me out of it. But the idea that that was manufactured on purpose for some whack reason absolutely fascinates me and i forgot to mention this one of the things i've learned about doing space for universe is doing even though i'm researching something on laurel canyon now i went and learned about nixon and then i went and learned about this and, and then i went and learned about jfk assassination and now i'm learning about dark matter like holy crap <laughs> <laughs> it all fits together i'm seeing the big picture now she has a, a, a room where she's got this all you know, mapped out with yarn and on a board and, you know, um, all the conspiracy theories. Uh, but listen, together. don't you don't you think that, OK, you had Nixon mm -hmm. and then here come Which the, that, that the was MK a, Ultra that was a pretty, experiments. Pretty interesting show we did on. Nixon. Yeah. yeah. Here comes the MK Ultra. Now mm -hmm. LSD experiments. Now they're putting it out there to a specific spot in California. Well, wouldn't you say you that know, it's like and then the JFK a, assassination? Like the, it's like. Wouldn't you say that it's a, uh, like the, the fixed song, One Thing Leads to Another? Yes. When we would talk about Nixon, yes. then this would come up. And uh, and then the shadow government. We talk mm -hmm. about that and Bilderberg Group. And it, and I know I sound like a wingnut, but I'm telling you, I think these things are connected in a historical, chronological order. Well, you know, a, a conspiracy theory, uh, you know, I guess it's gotten a lot of negative uh uh, you know, connotation to it because, you know, it's Well, I a think we should drop the conspiracy and just call it theory because mm -hmm. it hasn't been, it's not something that's been proven. It's actually more of a hypothesis, I think. Um, I got to review the scientific method. Uh, it's an idea based on hopefully logic and information that's out there, not just conjecture. And the I've conspiracy seen, I, part of it isn't I've really there. I've seen some pretty interesting conspiracy theories um, that uh, you you go, hmm. Well, I could I could see that. Yeah, I really think yeah. at this point we could drop the word conspiracy. I'm like, mm -hmm. here's a theory. Yes, it's a little more out there and mm -hmm. whack. But, I, I, I think know. I think Jean Jean Vito pretty much sums it up as the grand illusion. I like that. That's really mm -hmm. good. Jean. It's an illusion. Yeah. yeah. So that's my number three, Laurel Canyon. Mm -hmm. uh, Number two is our interview with Jeff Mudgett because we're no. he's learning about his personal history, right. which is part of American history. He's the what the great 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 grandson of America's first known serial killer, mm -hmm. um, Herman Mudgett, right? Or who went by the name H. H. Holmes, right? The murder possible suspect they say maybe for Jack the Ripper, but I think it's a little more far fetched. But um, we had Jeff on because you saw him on a TED Talk and then against Solaris had him on mm -hmm. her show and recommended that we interview him. So I got his book and it was fascinating. There's parts of that book that kind of felt like a Lovecraft novel. It just sent these unearthly chills down my spine when he talks about his ancestor and mm -hmm. his ancestor building that building. This was his murder building. Right. And it happening during the World's Fair. Right. So this is history. This is our history, and, and but it's that, personal to him. And at that time, you know, there were so many people 
um, there for the world. It was there. easy to be a serial killer it, in the days. You know? It was easy for forensics people to, weren't to, to disappear. Yeah, forensics weren't really there. I, um, and and I had seen you know many documentaries on the subject matter, and um, and then when it was approached uh, to us by Soloris, it was like really oh the cool you and we know? saw his ted talk i looked at his yeah. ted talk so, um he's a cool guy too yeah. uh my favorite part of that interview really quickly is when i asked him i said before you ever knew this before you were ever told about your ancestor in your whole life did you ever have an inkling that something was wrong or there's something in your makeup wasn't quite right or your dad or your grandfather mm-hmm. that something was off did you feel anything or did you inherently know anything do you ever have an inkling he says he goes it's interesting you should say that and i was like yay good question <laughs> pat myself <laughs> on the back and then of course my number one topic that we did in history was this year and it's the code breaking women of world war ii because um, uh, i had no idea they mm-hmm. existed once again uh you know women actually not, uh, going underappreciated um, and or, unknown. And unknown. Forget underappreciated. Mm-hmm. Unknown. And um, so, and, and that ties into that movie I saw not too long ago um, about the women who um, were at NASA. And uh, who, yeah, yeah. So um, I can't remember the name of the movie. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, uh, very. The African American women yes. who were at NASA. Yes, very great. Great. So. Great, uh, interesting group of historic things. I mean, d- did you have t- top fives for all these? Mm-hmm. Okay. Some of them don't have five because okay. we didn't have five shows on them. But, yeah. Well, Solana, we're at the uh, bottom of the hour. We'll so talk let's about fringe science. Take come that back. break. So don't go anywhere. Explore the universe with Space Boy and Sirlata. The epic battle begins this Friday, Friday, Friday. Direct from ringside at Laser Death Melt Pit. Bot versus Bot in Galaxy's Two Ton Weight Championship, where your challenger, Good Bot, will face the reigning champion, Bad Bot. You are terminated. Reserve seating starting at $30. Two drink minimum, where ladies don't get in free. This is an SBU production. You're listening to Space Boy Universe.
you are listening to Space Boy Universe. Here are your hosts, Space Boy and Sir Lum. All right, we're back. And uh, we're doing some behind the scenes stuff. As yeah. always, it's always fascinating what we do. We're between trying to give you a little extra content, but mm-hmm. it's not quite working there, with the technology. Qu- qu- it's not quite there. Don't right. say it's not working. It's well, it's not, not quite syncing. We're not quite. It's close, but it's. <sighs> something is being temperamental. It's not Space Boy, but something is being a little butt and it's not cooperating as well as it could have. Oh, well, do you have that YouTube clip? Yes. Uh, uh, why don't we play something funny? Um, here's a snippet from this year where. Um, Space Boy made me laugh to the point where I eventually had to get up and run out of the studio be- and change my pants. Are you going to be all right? Yeah, I... I <laughs> He's bleeding from his head. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, why don't you just laugh about it? I saw that hey, big deal. he's got a knife in his back and he's bleeding all over the place. <laughs> he's touching his paper towel. How, how funny is that? <laughs> you're touching his he's paper towel die. on your head. He's going to die and I'm going to laugh myself. Stop it, I'm going to pee. <laughs> Stop it. That's what you sound like. The, like, uh, am I worried my wife is turning into the Joker or something? <laughs> well, you keep touching this towel well, your head. Uh, apparently, I scratched off something on my forehead. A boo-boo. You got a boo-boo. And, and it's... He's got a dot of blood that's just coming out of his head, and he keeps putting this towel to it, and there's just this blood, blood, blood. <laughs> You're going to die. <laughs> I win. That's what you sound like. <laughs> You can't make me have to leave again. You were giggling. That's what set me off. <laughs> the house has carbon monoxide and we're getting poisoned. <laughs> so there you go. Um, but there, we no, there's more to that clip. Um, sorry, it's trying to autoplay other things. Um, there's more to that clip that he didn't include where... He, you hear me throw the headphones down and I literally run out of this room and then he has to fill the time talking to himself till I come back having changed my pants and everything. So, um, yeah. And every single time I think about that clip, that incident, no matter where I am, I just bust out laughing. I was alone in an elevator and I started thinking about it. And I was like, no, you've got to keep a straight face. You've got to keep a straight face. <laughs> I couldn't do it. But um, it's like one of the few things that really brings me joy. <laughs> and I know it sounds sick because he's bleeding while I'm laughing. <laughs> but, um, give me do this? Okay. But it's not like he was bleeding to death. It was like this dot of blood that just kept, it just kept coming out. But it wasn't like a profuse. It's like a, he was going to lose blood and die. No, it's not the point, Sir Lana. Is but the point, the point is, is it was funny. the point. Is, yeah, it's exactly what. Sorry, you I'm trying would, to put plug something in here. Exactly what, That's what that I rubbing would, is. Uh, figure you would say is that. Uh, oh, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, I'm they, trying to help Space Boy with something. Yeah, ultimately, um, you know, uh, we got another clip here that she's going to line up here. All you have to do is open it up and just play it and okay. play it, but but. Pause it before you play it because uh, I've, turn, I've turned it down so that you can get it there. But anyway, Open. but in that situ- you know, that's just one instant out of many instances that we've had over the years here at Space Boy's uh, uh, universe, Space Boy universe. And, um, you know, and that's what's made great uh, comedy And gold. they're so unexpected, these moments. Um, it's the unexpected stuff. Hold on, I've opened AMP. Is it going to do it? Well, I have you turned down on that. Well, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. So, Hang but on, anyway, I'm trying, to... I'm, I'm trying to keep the, you know, this is a live okay, program. Okay, here we go. Here on. we go. I got it. I got okay, it. So is it paused? Ready to go? Hold on. Uh, as I try to ramble on, which at some point she'll stop me and say, okay, I got it. Wait, there's a lot of, did you, did you mute it? Yeah, I muted it. Okay. I told you I muted it. I've got it so, ready. So this, just hold that. Let's go ahead and get into our next uh, uh, thing here of uh, of top top 500 things that you've got over there. Okay. Are you ready to get into okay. the next? No, 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 I'm no. I'm stopping no. it. Stop it. Okay. What is your next? My next topic is French science. 
Hi. French science. Um, you've got to relax. All right. You, now. You've got to continue on. I've cheated on some of this because I've lumped a lot of things in one one number, but mm. I will start with number five. And I'm cheating here because I've put Preston Dennett, Michael Huntington, Mark Johnson, and Steve Colburn all in one. Those are separate interviews we did, but each one I learned a little something I didn't know. Um, definitely with Mark Johnson because he's such a cool guy, and I'm not kissing up just because this is the network we're on with him. <laughs> Preston Dennett I had heard and known for a while as a researcher, and I respect him because he's just like us, a regular guy. Mm -hmm. And he's gotten respect from other people who are big names in the ufology um, and we got to talk to him about uh, moon theories and conspiracies, and that was just so freaking cool. And then Colburn, um, mm -hmm. that was just like, whoa, the, uh, the behind-the-scenes stuff. And isn't he another um, suggestion guest? Yes. From I mean, we, we wouldn't have half the content we do if it went for Solaris <laughs> Blue Raven. And, of course, Michael Huntington, which we needed to follow up with him because he was going to go to these cool – paranormal mm -hmm. hot spots and i would love to pick his brain about if he has thoughts about skinwalker ranch mm -hmm. and i think we need to do a show on that other ranch too the bunny ranch stardust star oh, something you, oh i know what you're saying uh in fact uh you know john edmonds yes um yeah i'd, I'd love to get into that mm -hmm. so those were some big names that i really learned a lot and enjoyed talking to so number four is any time we interview Solaris, Blue Raven, or Patrick Spore, mm -hmm. I can't, it's almost like I can't separate them in my mind. Um, we introduced them to each other. That was one thing we, we introduced her to Patrick. And uh, hopefully Patrick's still our friend. <laughs> yeah, in fact, I saw that he sent an email recently. In, but uh, I met Patrick when I got to go on Truth Funders. Um, with, uh, with Mark Schwartz. Truth Finders? Truth funder. Funders. Really? Yeah, and that's how I came across uh, <laughs> Patrick Spohr. He had called in while I was, you know, being interviewed by Mark and um, Mark and Art. And uh, and he, he seemed like a pretty cool dude and everything, and we got him on our show, and uh, uh, and then that's how we handed him off to Solaris. And uh, um it's always been a pleasure to talk to him. And he's been a wealth of information behind yes. the mic too, or beyond the mic, if you will. And um, we can never get enough Patrick Spore. Yes. And Patrick helps us in other ways, like moral support. Oh yeah. Um, I'm not going to get into that. Cause but it's not, it, it's, it's pretty, nice, but it's nice to have moral support and, 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 and Solaris and, um, and Patrick have, been there in that situation to you know business wise and mm. and kind of help us guide mentoring us and, and mentoring and and, and it, it'll and be nice. okay don't give up it's gonna be all right you know people right. come and go in your life you just gotta and at, at the end of the day i always say at least you and i have each other and like, <laughs> the world can just burn down around us we've got each other so but definitely anytime those two are on and you might be hearing from one or both of those before the end of the year. Mm -hmm. We hope we like to have them on, uh, on a, a fairly regular basis. Mm -hmm. You know, we only have some, you know, so many shows in a year. Another person I would love to have back. Cause I think he's got some more content out there. And we, we talked to him. I believe it was this year is John DeSouza, mm -hmm. another big name out there. And he kind of expanded my mind. He's got me believing that we do live in a multiverse and it's not what we think it is. And the world is a scary place. And I don't think you should just trust any Tom, Dick, and Harry alien that's out there, if they're out there. And uh, they they want your soul. Because they don't have one. They want yours. They want to be closer to the creator. And they want what we have. And they can't have it because they've been exiled or it's been taken away from them. And that lines up with my core beliefs I brought up with. So... He's like the closest I found to an explanation. And this is something I've always said to you, or maybe I've said it to you a few times is, you know how in physics, there's the idea of a grand unification theory. Um, I wish there was one for alien races because everybody's got different, you mm -hmm. know, opinions and ideas and experiences. So I wish this is as close as I can get to my own personal alien 
unification theory. So. Gotcha. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, number two, of course, is Daryl Sims, our interview with Daryl Sims, because he did compliment us on it later. In fact, you know, uh, that is probably the most popular um, out of the most listened to episodes in uh, the S SBU catalog. And the funniest thing about him, he, not, <laughs> not that he's funny, is that we were at Comic Palooza in May and we're sitting at our booth at Comic Palooza and off in the distance I see this guy and I said, dang, that is some awesome Daryl Sims cosplay. Who would even think to come to Comic Palooza dressed as Daryl Sims, Sims. <laughs> and then 10 minutes later, it's Daryl Sims. Right. <laughs> he just walked in, does himself. And so, And what's you know. funny is I remember from the previous con that uh, I remember seeing him. I was there. hoping we'd so, see him, and we did. Yeah, so that was really cool. But uh, that was a good interview because um, he talked about the experiences like an FBI investigator, like a mm. special forces guy. Right. You know, he didn't have it like it wasn't all this hand-holding happiness. It mm. was like. This was not a good time, and right. I'm after these guys. If I ever catch these sons of guns, I'm going after them Texas style. I'm like, yeehaw. <laughs> so do check that out if you haven't. And, of course, now my number one in the fringe is now controversial for some people. Mm -hmm. But Space Boy and I have a certain belief that the guy is innocent, and we won't get into that right now but because um, we did get in on the show. We decided to do a show on the topic of Stan Romanek and all his experiences. At that time, when I did the when we did the show, I had already read all of his publications that he and his wife put out. Since then, they've taken them down because they don't want to seem like they're trying to profit off of their story. Now, let, let's but, take a quick step back, though, Solana. Is initially I said, "Hey, I want to do a show on this," and yeah. you were reluctant because the controversy, the controversy, and and maybe the baggage that might have come along with it. You know, as mm -hmm. as we kind of like like what was it the hitchhikers we yeah. learned from yeah we didn't like, want to bring we, anything upon we, ourselves we didn't want anybody showing up to the but front you door and I talked, you know, beaming up to the mothership you, you know. and i talked so we believe he's innocent and then you and i learned something that we can't talk about right we learned something behind the scenes that we now we really know that he's not he didn't do anything wrong mm -hmm. but we can't talk about that so he was set up we really believe he was set up by different forces to to take the fall for this thing that had nothing to do with ufology so we didn't discuss that at the time but that's and, what we believe that's why we went ahead and did the show and and, and we didn't book you know no him. we didn't try to reach out we said let's just look at what's available mm -hmm. based on his test older testimony that mm -hmm. you can find on youtube plus i had read his book another book his wife's book and the one where he's channeling this dude so um I just went through a timeline of what his experiences were and what happened to him, what forces were out there harassing him, trying to discredit him, the creepy things that happened that were not paranormal but were for people. So we get all the way through our three-hour show, and we're like, okay, let's open up the phone lines. You know, here, you know, here's our number, blah, blah, blah. And I think we took one or two calls, mm -hmm. and like the third or fourth call is like, Somebody said something. I said, "Oh, sure, it's great to have, um, great well, to have a show. Well, Who is well, this on, calling?" You're, you're getting ahead because uh, at some point in the middle of the broadcast, um, his wife shows up in our chat. Lisa shows up in the chat room, and they're like, "Wow, this is great! You know, the uh, the space cadets are engaging with uh, Lisa. Mm -hmm. She's enjoying the program." And um, yeah, we weren't <clears throat> saying anything good or bad. We were just recounting just what recount happened mm -hmm. in his life. I think we were being and very I was fair. using his books as the source. Mm -hmm. So, um, so she was already in the chat, but I wasn't thinking anything about it. So, like the third or fourth caller, somebody calls in, like, "Yeah, sir, can you tell us?" When it tells your names, like this is Stan Romanek, right? And I think you and I just like the blood just drained from our faces. Yeah, we were like, oh, I cannot believe. And then we when we collected Stan. ourselves, we were like trying to high five across oh. the desks, and we couldn't reach each other. And mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, um, and this is before he went to trial. This is before he was still at home. He mm -hmm. had not been taken into custody or anything. So. Um, Back then, and even now, we believe the guy's innocent. He was set up. 
uh, for this and the things that he went in for was not him and it wasn't his fault and it was not his property. He wasn't responsible for that being there. Mm -hmm. And that's all we can say. But still a very interesting interview to say the least. You know, uh, Shalon, I don't want to rush you. Well, that was my number one. Uh, yeah, but do you have any other list there? or um, Gaming uh, only has three. Um, and that's the only topic you have left? No, I have music, pop culture, and technology. Those have five. Can Can you go ahead? And I know for the, for the sake of time, can we just hit the number ones for each one of those categories? Well, we still have... Uh, don't we have other another things? Another hour left? No. We, no. We need to well, talk okay. about... Well, okay. Let me just go through them quickly. Um, for gaming... Uh, my top one is the Doralise Ramos with uh, XS oh, VR yeah. because yeah. we've been hunting her down for two years. And, and it was great to get her on. She's and, a female who runs a whole company here. Yeah. And um, that was the s same one where the clip where I laughed at Space Boy and had to leave. That came from that same show. Mm -hmm. uh, music. I don't want to offend anybody. Can I just quickly say, number five, all Space Boy music shows. Number four, The History of EDM. Number three, the show with Jeff McCall. Number two, Uncle Brit of No Stone Music. And number one, Pony Trap. Nice. Okay. Uh, pop culture. Number five, Jim, Jody Bray, and Bill Lutz. Number four, comedian Rich Scheidner. Number three, talking with Joe Grisafi, Amanda Diane, and Jason Ration. That's cheating, I know. Number two, talking to Mr. Lobo. And number one, I put it under pop culture because I know where else to stick it, was talking to John Sumple, who is the director of... Uh, extraordinary, the Stan Romanek story. Right. Right before the blank hit some, the, you know great, what. Yeah, I enjoyed uh, talking to him, and I enjoyed talking to Mr. Lobo. Yeah, everybody on that list. Yeah, Mr. Lobo might be the same person. So technology, <laughs> number five, the recent show I did on quantum computing because I, I learned something and I understood it. Number four, the show on dark matter because I learned something and I understood it. Number three, the show on AI. It's scarier than it sounds, people. Number two, our technology-controlled future. Again, it's scarier than it sounds. And number one technology show was, of course, our interview with David Murray, the 8-bit guy, because that's like having uh, to interview your nerd king. Yes, uh, that was a wonderful interview. And uh, to, to be able, you know, because we're, we're so much on YouTube, and in the next half hour, we're going to get into that. Yeah, uh, I actually and, have something here for and, that. And so... Um, uh, Serlana, um, how long is that clip that you have? Nine minutes and 35 seconds. Let's go ahead and play it, and then we'll we'll bleed out into the top of the hour break. All right, let's do it now. Hurry. All right, so uh, you're I'm piped falling. up. I'm I've never hit bottom. Why, that's why I had to go to the Sorry about that. Uh, apparently, we didn't realize that muting the microphone part. Or did you start it over, or what are you doing? I, I, I tell you what. Let's go ahead and take the break, because we want you to get the full the full clip, because it is our, our favorite lady, Bev, and um, it, it, it was very fun to talk to her about that night. So uh, stand by. A little technical difficulty. I caught what we did, but here we go. Space Boy Universe on the SVU Network. Explore the universe with Space Boy and Sir Lada.
Greetings, space cadets. Let's see what's in the sky tonight in the Space Boy Universe. Tonight, in the eastern sky, we have Space Boy Universe rising above the horizon in glorious splendor. And in the west, we can see Solanus Majoris, which is visible at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, just below the K-28 belt. So keep your eyes on the sky and listen to Space Boy Universe. are listening to Space Boy Universe. Here are your hosts, Space Boy and Sir Lana. All right, all right, all right. I think we've got everything worked out. Uh, did you want to set this up? Yeah, if you're keeping score and you've finished your online degree, this is from show 2.03 on dreams. The subject was dreams. That's season two. And our we call we lovingly refer to Bev Beverly as our marriage counselor, and you'll see why. Uh, she called in after the show to talk about dreams and everything that happens when you're dreaming in bed. So let's let's hear that clip now. And the dream about falling, I've never hit bottom. Mm-hmm. Bob yeah. has, and my dad has. Well, how many drinks did you have? <laughs> 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 Okay, so why are you going to say anything about <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. I was well, just waiting for Solana to say something. So he, Space Boy can't snore. He had that surgery. He so needed something fixed. He's got that fixed. Oh, man, Bob. But he does everything else instead of snoring. He hoots. He hollers. He giggles. He moans. He groans. He makes ah. clicking noises. 
he rolls around side to side like he I swear the other night it sounded like somebody was torturing him. He was just like he was in horrible distress. And uh, I mean, and my my instinct is to I should just punch him. Uh, hmm. you know, not wake him up gently like just punch him in the arm. <laughs> Now, Bev, I don't like I don't like the fact that you're taking enjoyment out of beating a bob. <laughs> um, I think it's wrong that you know it's a it's a thing that's happening an ep- ep- epidemic that's happening through America where wives are beating up their husbands. You know, I never touched him. Why? That's in, why I had to go violent the, anger. I had to go to the emergency room the other night um, because I had a broken rib. I don't know what he's talking about. I I asked him over and over like, could you just please? Stay in your quadrant. There's no need to come over to this side. There's nothing awesome happening over here. All I wanted to, to do was get a hug from my wife and reassure her that I love her. It's too hot for that. And and what she do? She pulls out the brass knuckles. Your and... your your body is putting out thirty thousand BTUs a second. It's already hot enough. When we have the one day of winter, you will wish you had all that BTU. I got. The, I have the world's snuggliest blanket. So. And you have the world's huggiest husband, but you won't accept it. <laughs> He's on like Bob and I. <laughs> we had a heated, it started out as a heated text exchange. Oh, God. Well, I can only <laughs> imagine what she's about to go a down. A heated what? Text exchange over the phone. And I said, when you get home from work, because I get home oh. before, uh, I said, we are going to have a serious adult discussion about my pillow. Uh-oh. Oh, my goodness. Uh-oh. And... <laughs> I had stayed home from work because I was, you know, I was, I was so headachey, coughing and sneezing. I was really bad. She was playing hooky. I was not. I mean, I got, I have the doctor's note to prove it when I went to that ER clinic that doesn't take my medicine. Anyway, she puts this pillow between us and she, you know, I, in the middle of the night, all I did was touch the pillow. I didn't take it. I didn't, you know, You were unconsciously yanking on it. I was not yanking yanking on it. You were were. feeling me roll over and hit the pillow. And you automatically dug into me with your claws, and, what? and, and you know I have seen you hug on that pillow. Yes, it was an unauthorized hugging. Look, it's I will, my pillow. Oh, no. I have two. When, when you leave the room, I'm hugging on that pillow. I'm gonna take my pillows and put them in a closet when I, I leave. I'll hug those pillows whenever I want to. Uh, you, <laughs> how many pillows do you have? How many do you need? I have one pillow that i why can't you buy more for yourself it's not the point at the time i'm trying to teach you the the thing of i'm trying to teach you how to and you refuse to share i I couldn't breathe you're very selfish i could not freaking breathe and i was trying to stack them so i could breathe you couldn't breathe and you're constantly touching it touching it breathe the only time you use that pillow is to put it over your head and I, i don't want to be blamed for your death well, if I die, then, you know, whatever. You get all the pillows in the universe. So Then it's not the but ability of teaching finally, sharing. So he calls me. He gets off of work. And he, we call. And we have this discussion about the pillow. And he made me laugh. So I start coughing so bad. It hurt my chest. He says, are you going to have, like, an elaborate PowerPoint presentation about this pillow when I get home? I said, as soon as I feel better, I'm going to make the world's most elaborate PowerPoint presentation about my pillows and your quadrant and what you can and can't do. And so the moral of the story is one should not jump to conclusions until they have all the facts. I suggested he has this pillow, Bev. I swear to God, I don't know where this pillow came from. I never had it. I didn't buy it. This pillow just like appeared out of nowhere. But it's like... If you know what the Tempur-Pedic bed is made of, that really kind of firm foam, but it's not a Tempur-Pedic foam pillow. But yeah. it is like the hardest brick concrete foam pillow. If you tried to have a pillow fight with this, you'd knock someone out cold. They'd go to the <laughs> hospital. So I suggested, because it's so firm, it could stand up on its side. I said, what if I put that pillow between us as like a windbreak where you know to stay over there? He's like, hey, are you trying to build walls between us? I'm like, I just want you to stay on your side and stop touching See, my pillows. And it's moments like this that, Sir Lana, you're, you're tearing this marriage apart, and I'm just, I don't know what to do anymore. That's going to be hysterical. Oh we sit down in front of the, the divorce lawyer and say, well, you kept touching my pillow. You would Officer. say that. And I just couldn't oh take it anymore. God. 
<laughs> I don't think you do. Um, the only thing that's a bit odd, we don't share blankets, and I think that's probably the only thing that's probably keeping this marriage together. Um, <laughs> he wraps himself up in his special blanket like a little burrito, and he's happy. So he doesn't use the sheet. Like you know, the, that's that's too much. That I've got, I'm too hot. I have to have you know the fitted sheets on the bed. It goes all the way across like normal, but the you know the right. sheet that you pull over you, I have that. It's the okay. whole king hold, size hold sheet Let me for describe myself. It. So she has the sheets. She has a quilt. She has a cr- a, crochet it's, thing. It's not. She's a quilt. got a fleece blanket thing. It's not a quilt. Uh, I mean, it's almost like you know that story of the 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 girl that slept on the mattresses and they put the a pea in it. Princess there. and the yeah, pea. She sleeps underneath all the mattresses. No, and, no, and no, <laughs> no. First of all, that blanket has a print on it that looks like a quilt. It's super thin. It's just a little Walmart blanket. What about the green thing? Uh. What green thing? There's a green thing that you have in That's there. a sentimental thing. What is it? My mother crocheted what is it? that. It's, it's a quilt. I mean, a, a it's crochet not a quilt. thing. It's a crocheted afghan. And I have that at okay. the foot of the bed so because it keeps the got, covers weighed down. She's got an afghan. She's got a, 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 a lima. She's got a, a, a pack of, uh, of uh, llamas. I mean, she's got everything you can think of on her side of the bed. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when at the end of the day, um, what it comes down to, Bev, is that uh, she's like uh, the old Soviet Union with the the wall in Germany. You know, she wants to put up this big wall between us, and 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 I'm like in Ronald Reagan. I, I'm like Ronald conflict. Reagan. I'm saying, Sir Lana, tear this wall down. And so, you know, that's all I'm saying. Is because I thought that can would we help give, Can we give peace a chance? I'm conflict. Asking, we could have peace in our lifetime. And it's just a matter of tearing down the wall. I thought if that pillow was there as the wall, it would lessen the chances of you getting into trouble. What, what trouble would I... I mean, touching my pillow, doing oh, anything God. freaky. You had your elbow in my zone, and it just bothered the hell hell out of me because it was just there and it was there it was there it was there and it's just like it's in my way please get back to your quadrant i don't know what you're I doing see how, over here. see how she talks in terms of quadrant and zones and next thing she'll be saying to me while i'm sleeping papers please and i'm like what i won't be able to, to cross into switzerland or anything like that you know <laughs> oh you guys Remind me so much of Bob. And I, <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm just, just deadly imagine. serious about the pillow thing, though. I'm not. Uh, this is, is not a and, comedy bit. It, He's but, got to stop touching my stuff. See, and it's a matter of you know, it's a. <laughs> yes, um, we have a California king size Tempur-Pedic, and some nights it does seem like he's in another zip code, but you know. When I, you know, when I need to get his attention, I, I know how to, you know, roll over four or five times, you know, show him what's on my phone, and then I go back to, you know, my zip code. The point is that when I want to go over there and visit her and, and hug on her, and you it's like... You need to make an appointment. What? <laughs> well, I'd love to make an appointment, but your calendar is I ran by your... I you in. Your, your calendar is ran by your pillow. Well... <laughs> I can't tell you. You know, it's just a harsh, harsh mistress there. <laughs> harsh mistress. <laughs> Yegmeger the DMZ. <laughs> well, like, oh, God. but like in Star Trek, the demilitarized zone yeah. where it's all lawless. And... Yeah, there you go. That's what I was gonna say. Oh Lord! You I guys dreamed are about stripped. him stealing my pillows. And there you go. There you go. And though to this very day, we, you know, you've been pretty uh, you've lax. You've been behaved. The only things you've been doing is like, I, and I don't think you're a hundred percent awake when you do this. Is you, you'll pat me on the arm or whatever body part that's mm-hmm. the closest, and just very gently like tap, tap me or pat me with your fingers, and like, I don't know what that's about because I'm clearly I'm not asleep because I know you're doing well, it. Well, I'm just making sure the aliens happened uh, abducted you and you, you're still there, and you know. I had a dream recently. I think it was really freaky. Oh, never mind. Anyway, um, yeah, I thought that you do that when you pat on me. I know you've done things to where 
you're trying to get me to stop snoring. But if I'm not asleep, I'm not snoring, and I know you're patting on me, mm-hmm. like I don't know why no, see, you're there, patting on me. See, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. There are two things. I pat on you just to acknowledge that you're there and that I'm well, there. Well, I know I'm there. I and, know you're and there. And two, when you're asleep and you start... That s- I understand. S- so, uh, s- uh, sawing that down the That I understand. Board. you got to do what you got to do. Give, I give a little tug on the blankets, just enough to kind of get you out but of the that. Padding, it that baffles me. I'm like, you know I'm here. What, yeah, what are you doing? But that's the closest I can get to a hug. Oh, that's sad. It is sad. I hugged you yesterday. That, yeah. should, that you should be good for at least what two more weeks. Well, the way you're you're doling it out, you know, like, uh, um, you know, there's just no chance in getting a a hug on a regular basis. Mm, that sounds like a that sounds like a problem. You should talk to someone about that. Anyway, so you know, uh, great clip, Serlana. Um, it's one of my favorites. I know there was another one from this year, mm. but I, for the life of me, I didn't know what show it was on. And she and just got lazy and just. Uh, I was freaking unwell. You want me to describe in excruciating detail what was wrong with it this week? You know, it's very. Hello, who got his tooth yanked out of his mouth this week? My pain was in a different area. Oh, well, I'm sorry your pain was in a different area, but, uh, you know, I'm not trying to make it any less than the getting the tooth yanked out of me. Yeah, but once that's yanked out, you're good. No, mine, I'm, I'm still, mine is still going on right now. I'm still having to take pain medicine. And if it wasn't for antibiotics and an over-counter the thing, I wouldn't be here. Alrighty then. So where do we go from here, Sir Lana? More bickering. Um, no, we're going to segue into... Okay. Um, so I wanted to just... just this is random stuff. Mm-hmm. Random stuff. Okay. Things we covered or may have not covered that I also enjoyed. And some, some things that we're doing and learning... A little outside of the universe, but still has an impact, right? So I was just going to say some of the things we've talked about on this show that we have done, I really enjoyed, but they didn't get in like our top fives or anything. Is like whenever we talk about really specifically weird things like the Dulce Wars, Underground Bases, Skinwalker Ranch, which you just talked about. Um, I like, I mean, the the weirder the better i really like it and this earlier this year some of last year but mostly this year i discovered creepy pasta stories uh, of course i'm the last one on earth to do so i know but um creepy pastas are just largely these are fictional accounts that people will write and they'll send it to somebody who has a youtube channel and that person will read their stories and usually these are all disturbing, upsetting, paranormal, you know, crazy serial killer stalkers. Oh, I was working late, the late shift at Subway, and this guy came in, yada, yada, yada. Mm-hmm. You know, things like that. And then I had to quit doing that because I was getting these freaking weird dreams. That, and I was like, I have to stop doing that while I'm trying to go to sleep. So uh, strange stories, encounters you don't hear often. One of those channels that I do like that. Are not creepy pasta. These are supposedly real witness testimony and accounts that get sent to this guy. Is that Beyond Creepy channel on YouTube? Um, when it comes to gaming, we don't do a lot of that content because we're not a gaming channel. Now I was going to get into this. Now uh, I have purchased Doom Three because it went on sale. Mm-hmm. I'm too scared to play it. <laughs> and no, that's silly because I would sit up late at night in the dark playing original doom back in 90 whatever when that came out and i was like 20 21 years old and wolfenstein and duke nukem and i just loved it and um something that we got to do within this um last season of our show was we were able while we still had electricity we were able to broadcast day after the hurricane harvey to tell you how we were doing and what was really going on in Houston that you were not hearing from the mm-hmm. national media, you know, getting things, you know, like here's the real things that are happening is we're here at ground zero. So, and then of course, two, three days later, we lost everything in the power. So, um, another significant thing that's happened, it's not show related that, um, I taught S S B whatever I taught space boy something he didn't know. And it changed his life. 
I told him about the Trenta size at Starbucks. He did not know. He did not know it existed. There is a. There's a bigger size than a Vente. There's a 32 ounce for tea only mm. right now that you can get. There's a bigger size than a Vente. It's Trenta, which is 30 in Spanish. Mm -hmm. So uh, that really changed things. And then something you and I have started doing, or maybe I was doing it, and you just sort of came on board with me. Because I had certain YouTubers I've been watching for a while. Mm -hmm. So um, the whole adpocalypse thing go, goes down in 2017, throughout 2017. Uh, not necessarily PewDiePie's fault, but he actually put the nail in the coffin. He didn't mean to. He wasn't trying to, but it just broke down that way. So that means channels on YouTube's... Uh, that are monetized that have ads run on their on their videos meaning when they run an ad they're getting revenue from that because you're watching that ad and you partner with somebody whose ad that is so that went when I went down YouTube started really monitoring channels and videos mm -hmm. just like well does this fit in with our policy for monetization and being a partner mm -hmm. And then next thing you know is people's things are getting flagged and they're getting taken down. They're getting demonetized, meaning you can no longer make revenue on this video. You can take it down or, you know, take out the content. That's the problem. Of course, a lot of it's copyright strike, too. Mm -hmm. So this affected some of the big channels that had been going there where the, I'm talking about people who their occupation is to be a YouTube personality that's how they're getting the revenue and this nearly devastated a lot of people for getting demonetized so because of these policies that they were holding them to so what changed is you and i don't know if this is because of the apocalypse but a lot of these channels on youtube who are what you call let's play gamers meaning you go to their channel and mostly it's them recording themselves playing a game where it's on Xbox or PS3, 4, or it's on the PC. And that's how they were making their living. Well, there's been a huge change, a trend. And this is what we've started, Spaceboy and I have really started watching YouTube, YouTube channels and people who've been there a while because there's a trend of what's hot and what's getting followed, what has the most subscribers now. PewDiePie has been the, the channel with most subscribers. He's just a, a guy, he's from Sweden, living in Brighton, England. He has been the king for a while. He still is, but there's a channel that's about to catch up to him. And it's, it's not even an individual channel, it's a, a conglomerate channel from India because India just has a ton of people and I heard that there might be a thing where if you buy a certain product you automatically get subscribed to that channel so it might be some kind of underhanded stuff but PewDiePie has changed his content a lot of the, a lot of it's his own fault because of the controversy he's trying to keep his subscribers and keep their interest so he's gone from let's play to commenting about the bullcrap that's happening on YouTube and it has been fascinating content mm -hmm. because he's being you can see the bitterness but he knows it's his own fault but just what when they do what they do and they change his policies policies when he gets demonetized he brings up the thing and he shows you why he shows you all his statistics he has gone from that to more vlogs and like video blogging he has done this cheeky thing where he's like quote unquote borrowing things from his friends like Jack Septic Eye, Cinnamon Toast Can, and Markiplier. Uh, but they're all friends. But I've seen some big changes to where I've, there's this one YouTuber who's had this channel for a while and he was a gamer. And then he's now created another channel under his real name to try to get more different content over there. They've gone from gaming to try not to laugh challenges um they've gone to reaction videos i don't know why videos of regular people reacting to tv shows or stand-up comedy clips or i don't know why that's so popular but my gosh is that popular um challenges people doing stupid stuff kind of like almost like if you know the show jackass almost that level of stuff 
um, controversial stuff. But so I've seen a lot of these big, big channels really like gut their content out and start over in the attempt to try to keep their living going because that's how they're making a living. Like Cinnamon Toast Ken, who's friends with PewDiePie, he said he talked to Pewds, you know, one on one in private. It's like, my channel's dying. I can't, I don't have any new subscribers. What do I do? This is my livelihood. I got to keep, I got to try to keep going. I'm having another kid. And so he's like, PewDiePie says, well, playing games is dead. Unless you're playing Fortnite. For some reason, Fortnite's hot. I've never played it. It's not my thing, but, um, so you and I have been really watching the trends that's going on. And, um, we've been learning from this. You space boy have been learning from this a lot, I believe. And you've seen what works, what doesn't work. And there's some things we're going to try to employ. We do have a Twitch channel, but we haven't done anything with it yet. We're still learning, but we're hoping to do, I don't know if you want to talk about that live streaming or. Well, it's, it's a little close to the bottom of the hour. Do you want to uh, that later? Uh, I, I figured we'd uh, open up the last half hour sure. uh, to talk about that. K-28 but, wants to know real quick. And I was going to address that. <laughs> Don't take my okay, thunder well, away. Okay, I'll take it. You talk. One, um, it came up, uh, first of all, thank you, uh, Space Cadets, for being concerned about me. Uh, remembering the cough from hell that I used to have at the beginning of the year um, and uh, I worry about it always kind of circling back because it just sometimes it comes it goes well you know November is a challenging month for you physically too with that mm -hmm. cough and, mm -hmm. and back ache it's like er every six months I get this cough out of nowhere but um, yeah so we'll see. we'll see what happens uh, um, I did go to the doctor he Took me off some medicine, but uh, to be honest with you, I don't think it was the medicine. I think that um, you just had to work through I it. I think it was. It has something to do with sinuses, and and um, but I worked through it, got through it, and and yes, uh, I hated it. I punched it out of him, uh, and and I apologize uh, because it did come through on the mic, and um, but I'm better in that sense. I'm not have. I'm not having that cough now. K. Uh, Yes, we finally got a regular street in front of our house now. With city drainage. Uh, city drainage. So now, they can start, so now they can start taxing us. But when we have the next hurricane, mm -hmm. house ain't going to flood. Well, it didn't flood when we had the hurricane. Well, I think there's less likely. I mean, it got close. Mm -hmm. Close, it, close. It'd get close to like, you know, four inches from our door and then it would go back that, out. That yeah. made me sweat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that really made me sweat. Mm hmm. But yeah. So yeah, there's uh, two things. Once again, um, you know, Serlana can learn a lot from our space cadets about how compassionate you are about uh, how bad I felt. And so... Space cadets, you're beautiful and lovely, but you do not have to live with this man. <laughs> it's a different story when you're living with him. <clears throat> anyway. And you're having pillows next to him. Uh, yeah, whatever. So um, did you get enough cupcakes tonight? Probably. Mm. Probably um, for any human. Yeah, at the last break, I had a little ham sandwich. It was pretty tasty. <laughs> I was mm. going to tell me you had a cupcake sandwich. Ham. Anyway, so let's go take the last break, and then I will dive into the future of SBU. And if you want to call in, you know, you can yeah, do that. Yeah, but wait until get I get my thing off my chest first uh, about the future of Space Boy Universe. And, and then we'll go from there. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back after this. You are listening to Space Boy Universe on the SVU Network. Explore the universe with Space Boy and Sir Lada. Get your game on, Space Boy Universe. Level up with Space Boy Universe. No quarters, no problems. Play it at Space Boy Universe.
you are listening to Space Boy Universe. Here are your hosts, Space Boy and Sir Lum. All right, we're back. And so... Uh, Get it off yeah, your chest, whatever it is. Okay, so... Um, in the past, I'd say three to four months, I've been taking stock in, in Space Boy Universe and trying to figure out, well, how can we get the word out there? You know, we've constantly said, um, about, you know, you know, about the YouTube channel, about looking for more content there, um, and promoting that to you, uh, through our Spreaker, um, broadcast. And so, you know, I looked at things and what we were doing, what we weren't doing. And, and, and to be honest with you, I think that some degree, Serlana was kind of burnt out on doing some of the social media. And it's a, it's a lot. You know, I will tell you, it's a lot to promote all that stuff. Um, but um, I took the rings from her dealing with the social media, got more active with creating content as far as uh, promoting social media. And the other part of that equation, I said, you know, our YouTube channel is just, it, it was stale. It needed an update. It needed some new pictures. It needed just a, an overhaul, if you will. So I start working on that. And um, over the past four months, uh, the fruits of my labor have been paying off, which is, you know, awesome. Um, our subscriber base has increased. Um, and, um, uh, in addition to that, uh, we're getting lots of views on our YouTube channel with the various, uh, you know, things that have come up as uh, as I've been promoting social media. And so what that has done for us is that we're finally able to monetize our videos and, and start making a little bit of cheddar off of it, I guess you could say. Um, and as I've been trying to get up on top of it and, and all that good stuff, um, I have learned some more features about uh, YouTube that, uh, you know, taking the time out. And uh, at some point, we're going to get back into doing live casting off of YouTube, kind of going back to our roots, if you will, uh, but being a little yes. bit different. Um, we have access to some more things now. I threw, threw Solana an idea out today. I said, you know, one thing we could do is do Space Boy Music Live. Uh, where it'd be a, like a live concert and you could go there and, and, and hear music and me actually play live. And, um, and she was kind Watch of... Watch you on the cam? Uh, yeah, on the cam, yeah. Um, uh, other things would be like uh, my love for Star Wars. And, uh, you know, it'd be a live chat where you could be al along with the ride and be a part of the chat while I'm chatting it up. Or it could be just, um, you know, a, a chat where I'm talking and you can participate and I'll talk to you via the live chat. And, and we could just have another good time talking about that. And, you know, and those could be kind of random. You know, we'll still stick to the 9 p.m. Central Standard Time uh, Saturday night show that we've done all these years. Nothing's going to really change with that. Um, but our focus is going to shift a little bit to provide more content to the YouTube channel. And mm -hmm. so live, live kind of streaming, um, some gaming things. Solana uh, is, uh, you know, I have to sit down with her and, and kind of said, hey, you know, um, you know, you could do your own film of you know, your yeah. I was thinking about, well, there wouldn't be, the video would be the game. You wouldn't, mm -hmm. who cares about who, me, but I would, I've got the, the tools to do this for Doom. Um, Cause my graphics card came with the software to stream and record playing a game. So I need the headset to go into the, the computer and then I'm, off I go. That's all I would need is the, the mic headset combo. And I can record me playing Doom or something and maybe stream it to Twitch. It automatically hooks to Twitch and everything. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, yeah, uh, since I've been so proact proactive with YouTube, Serlana has been looking into the Twitch thing, and that will ultimately come down the pipe. And um, But, um, you know, when I say content is coming to YouTube, you better believe it because we still gonna do like videos where we do like little ten minute videos on like top ten lists or you know yeah, things the, we find. Yeah, uh, as long as you get up at a reasonable time, yes, uh, we'll still do those. 
Oh, God, there's always a catch. Yeah, so, you know, um, I'm moving forward on a lot of this stuff if for our audience. If only this was our job and we could stay up all night and do stuff. Which leads into what I was about to say is that um, I don't know what the future for uh, holds for Space Boy Universe other than, you know, the best laid plans of what we want to do. And, we, uh, you know, and, and I've been kind of hammering at a lot of stuff and I, I hope that you appreciate especially those who follow friends of space boy universe on the facebook uh, page uh, getting content delivered to you um, daily with all the various things and uh, i hope you've liked that um and and i will continue you've been to a beast about getting content out there mm-hmm. yeah because uh i i feel like uh, i've tapped in my ocd and so yeah. you know Perfect. it's all good so that's what we have to look forward to what we're, our plans are <clears throat> but you know tomorrow the earth can explode and we're all done for and or maybe somebody turns is it okay if off, I root for that uh, or somebody turns off the simulation that we're in off mm. um or, or Solana and i get uh stranded on a planet while exploring the universe and we can't come back home and communicate with y'all uh you know things can happen you know the future is uncertain but i tell you what is certain that with each day as we move forward we will create and provide you content and and try to get you new guests and uh, tap you into things you haven't heard before um, or bring you things you might have heard before with in a view of a new light so that's what you can expect with space boy universe as we go out and explore we hope you're along with the journey. Were you going to say something? No, uh, I, my I, brain's I, ticking over. I, I, you were just doing the jitterbug over there? <laughs> I, I don't know. And so anyway. Um, <laughs> I'm not paying attention. You know, that's uh, <laughs> so long. Thanks for all the fish. Good name. I like that. Um, so there you go, Sirlana. Uh, anything you want to add to that, um, you know, to validate? Uh, I'm really looking forward to doing some of the live streams on YouTube. Mm-hmm. That'll be good. good. Um, I'm wondering. I'm wondering what we can do simultaneously. I'm wondering if you can stream to yeah. YouTube and do it to Spreaker if you have two different setups. Uh, or... uh, and I've I've seen that done in the past, and I think it threw off people where they were listening to Spreaker and doing. The, you don't do both at the same time. You pick one. Pick one or the other. And you stick with it. You can't listen to <clears throat> do both at the same time. Um. The thing is that the, if to, to do something a live show, uh, it's it's involved. It really would require another person to be a part of that. Yeah, uh, but um, we don't have an unpaid intern. I, I'm sure that I can figure out a way to to bring that you know make those baby steps through technology to get something that's cool. We need a robot <laughs> that that nobody else is doing. That you know, I think I can. I can work something out. Nobody else is a robot. So anyway, um, just look for that uh, for us. To what, that's what our plans are, what we're doing. And um, hopefully we don't have another air condition breakdown. Um, hopefully uh, we don't have any other teeth between the both of us that need to be given. Actually, I do, but I'll just, I'll just die. I'll just drop dead. Uh, whatever. Uh, you're not dying. Um, and um, there you go. Okay. All right. What, what now? Uh, I'm handing it off to you. You had the big Do list. Wanna... I mean, if somebody wants to call in. If you, you want know... to call in, now is the time. 833-202-SBUN. 833-202-7286. It's uh, getting close, but we've got just enough time for like a five-minute call maybe. Mm-hmm. So if uh, that's a toll-free number, 833 202 7286-833-202-SBUN. You've got just a little time, but like I say, we're your friend. We're not here to to pick you apart or take, make fun of you or interrogate you. We want to be your friend. And, you know, if I can talk to a stranger, you can talk to a stranger because it's not something I do naturally. Stranger danger. Well, you know. There are some strange things out there, but uh, yeah, so we're doing really up in our game when it comes to social media and our YouTube. 
like you said, we just now qualified for monetization, and, and I think and, it'll and, work out and, really and well. And another thing we've qualified is Super Chat. Super Chat. Yeah, that means that you can make donations through the chat Ooh. thing. Caller, are you there? I sure am. Oh, that's our marriage counselor. Bev, what did you think about hearing yourself in a clip? I couldn't get over that. <laughs> and it made me laugh hearing it all over again, even though I've heard it a few times. But um, Oh, me too. Even I laughed. <laughs> that was funny. And then the night oh, he made me laugh so hard I had to leave the room. We have another that was caller. My favorite show. Yeah. Do you want to do a three-way? Yeah, I guess let's bring the third. Bev, call. do you mind? Do you want to see who's calling? I don't care. Okay, let's see. Third caller. I mean, yeah, second caller. Are you there? <laughs> second caller. Hi. 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 Michelle. It's Michelle. Hey. You, you and Bev are on together. Oh, hi. Hi, Bev. Hey, How's everybody you know, out there? We're all doing fine. Oh, hey, we're doing fine. So great to hear from you both. Uh, we've it's been a while because we've not had the phone lines open because of you know funding and whatnot. But you know we we plan for tonight because it's the anniversary show. We thought we'd let some of y'all call in and say hey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I just thought I'd call say happy anniversary. Well, thank you. Yes. We appreciate it. And and hey, Michelle, you, me, and Sir Monica. All three do a show together. <laughs> I think that'd be a great idea. I seen the right name. I posted it out there. It's hey, thanks for the fish. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do a secret we podcast. Would have fun, wouldn't we? We could have I a think lot we'd of be, fun. I think we'd get in trouble. I'm pretty sure we'd about I don't think it'd even be yeah, PG-13. Okay. It'd probably be like rated RX, you know, can't be under 21 to listen. It all depends on how tired I am. And excuse my throat, everybody out there, I've got a bit of a cold where my throat is just swollen right up. Oh, but bless your heart. Yeah, hey, I, I was looking at the chat. I, I hope you get better soon. Are you putting Vicks oh, on your I'll feet? Oh, I'll be fine. I have Vicks and heavy socks on. Everything's under control, man. Okay. <laughs> I told her to do a hot whiskey swing. <laughs> I drink. I don't have any whiskey right now. I don't have any alcohol. He's, he doesn't like it when I drink on the broadcast, which I think is just, I think it enhances the broadcast. But uh, Why do you think uh, uh, tea and sarcasm in, ended? Is dead, yeah. That is because my co-host has a life that is jammed no, that was packed. because the last the last show you did you you were off your rocker trying to mix drinks so while you, were on you the killed sweet tea and sarcasm no, because you, i was drunk you killed it okay well there's your answer it's dead okay. it's gone forever look space boy you're gonna be lucky if they don't like in the movie beowulf did you had to watch beowulf um where the king had that separation between his wife and the bed you're going to end up with one of those boards in the bed, man. You leave those pillows alone. <laughs> well, there's a thing that the, shot is it, for the Amish do. It's called bundling, where they have a special headboard that has a groove in it, and you put the board, you notch it into the groove, and you sleep on opposite sides of the board before you get married. So you can kind of get to know each oh, other wow. without touching each other. Oh, my god. Yeah, goodness. well, that's the same idea, but it, and it was a wooden board that went right down through. So, you know, it separated. Well, it would oh, have to wow. be padded. We'd have to pad it with, like, upholstery and cushioning so you wouldn't, like, ramp ram well, your knee your into it. at least. Yeah. Or get you want, him to, you want to train him. You I have to train, train me. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I have this little, it's not really a barrier, but it kind of happened that way. Um, I have this really fuzzy uh-huh. blanket that kind of kind of got rolled up, you know, over time between us. And there's a, a, a teddy bear that's really kind of firm, not your typical teddy bear. Oh. And um, that's where that's when I roll over and I just sort of put my arm over it because it's like it's the perfect height. Like put your arm over it when you're on your side. And um, these two things have kind of built like, you know, I have my little fortress now. And then sometimes mm-hmm. I have to take the pillow, I have two pillows, and I have to take one pillow out from under my head and put it slightly over my head, but not all the way where I die or anything. 
Um, because sometimes somebody over here falls asleep with their cell phone on and, and the, they don't turn off the screen and it's like lighting up the room like oh. Christmas Day. And oh. I can't stand oh, that. It's not that bright. It is. Girl, and I don't think alien, light's going to no. fight the aliens just because you have light Look, on. Look, you know, I don't see why you're complaining because you pretty much got your blanket over your head and you're looking at your phone anyway. So how does the light <laughs> I disturb do you? that so my phone light doesn't bother you. I st- I'm being I so still courteous. I see the and light. And you know how hot it is with that phone under the blanket? Okay. And I see it, still see the light coming in your phone. But do Big I complain boy. about it? No, no I don't. Your number. I you try to you try to be courteous it just blows up in your face i don't know i don't know whatever <laughs> being nice is not your strong point did you Look, not I know this before you married me i just okay these are things we need to wait and get into next month during our wedding anniversary <laughs> yeah uh-oh so when's your wedding yeah. anniversary october what 30th 30th? The day before well, we Halloween. Been married how long now? 12, 13 years. 12 years married, 12 years. 14 together. together. Wow. I can't believe yeah. I knew a man that long that wasn't related to me by blood. <laughs> You're, and Bob and I met in June of 1986, and we were married December 5th, 1986. <laughs> yeah. I had you both talked. I have you both talked. I've never been married. I can't be doing that. Oh. <laughs> I have asked him if you knew then, on the day we met, what you know now, would you have run the other way or would you have just said, let's just live together? And I flipped the script and I said, what did you know if you knew now what you knew then or something like that? Yeah, I would have said, let's get apartments next to each other. <laughs> 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 we're like let's live together but i have this separate room where i'll sleep and then i'll come visit you now i'll tell you what i do like about this relationship he he does his own laundry that is that is a mature adult thing to do i think that's awesome that's proper i never asked him to do hey, yeah, that he just does it asks, where would muffin live um, let's put a door in because she yeah. she'd be a cat lady. That's what she'd be. <laughs> the day didn't you stay home recently, like last week or something like that? Because you're you know your tooth and wasn't feeling well, and she came in and actually laid on the bed with you. I'm like, wow, she must be desperate. Because <laughs> 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 when she comes into her room to lay, it's on my body. And she, that's where she wants to lay. It's on my body. She doesn't go to him. Nothing. I don't know what it is about me specifically. She has to lay on me. <clears throat> she never lays on me. Yeah, never that's the way Sophie me. was. She would lay on my side. She would wait till I get on my side. Then she would climb yes, up on me on and my lay side. right on my side. She was so light, I never felt her. Well, what gets me is when I, the times I am laying on my back and she, she gets in there, is I wake up with this cat on my stomach and my crotch. And I'm like, how did I not feel you get there? She's not a heavy cat, but still, how do I not, how did I not know she got there? Oh. Just wake up and there's a cat. Oh, well, it's real fun with two cats and a dog in bed with you. No, I couldn't handle that. <laughs> Muffin doesn't come in every night. It's, yeah. it's like it's only on the weekends. It's like during a weeknight where we have to get up the next day to go to work. I can't be dealing with her all over me and having it because I have to toss and I have to turn. I can't. She's like one of those rodeo riders. Like she's going to stay on all eight seconds. Like I've tried to buck her off and roll and back and forth. She's like, she bears down. Like I'm staying. I'm going to work this out. You know, only I have the power to get her off of you. <laughs> she has this thing with space boy. She's, she's all right with him, but she's, it's like she does not trust him 100%. I have you know? a I have a little sound that I make that it's like a robot kind of thing. It's kind of like a vacuum cleaner, too. Vacuum slash robot. It sounds like a, a, a device. <laughs> she does not like that. Oh, yeah. that's mean. But that's no, mean. I only use it that to... Is- no wonder she don't like your face, boy. Okay, look. Well, it gets her, it gets her you, you, off 
You I mean, make it sound like I got a cattle well, I prod, and I, you know, I'm prodding it's her. It's the off. gentlest way. Sometimes I will just have to pick her up, put her over. But she just does this thing where, like Saturday mornings, if she's in there, she well, just loves all over me like she hasn't seen me in a week. And, and Serlana, she has, she, Serlana has a video clip of cats meowing, and it gets her off of her. Sometimes, yeah. There's a specific video of cats ah. meowing. It's a compilation um, for cats from kitten to adulthood. The same two cats. And if I, you know, pull my headphones out, crank up the volume, and I take my phone and I kind of just hide it out of sight, and she's laying on me, I play it, and she's like, she gets up like she's trying to find those cats, and then I can get out of bed. Aww. I try to be nice about it. You know, I don't want to just, like, push her off me or something, so I try to, like, make her think it's whoa, 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 her whoa, idea. Hold on, let's take a step. You know, Bev's going, aww. uh like with you, and it's like, uh, uh, Space Boy, you're just the meanest uh, person with you know, that cat. Well, oh, I didn't mean it that way. It sure did sound like that, Ben. Well, he did torture I'm her sorry. with a, a laser pointer, <laughs> and she really hates that thing. That scares the crap out of her. Well, you know, uh, Sophie, she never had anything to do with Bob. It was always me, unless she was in heat. When she was in heat, she was all <laughs> over Bob. <laughs> that was the only time she ever wow. had anything to do Damn. with Bob. <laughs> I'm sure Bob, you know, when he'd look over and he'd see her eyes, you know, it's like, oh, oh got to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was well, funny. Princess, princess is sick when I'm sick. Like today, she's been sick. Usually, she hugs my head on a regular basis when I sleep. She lay wrapped right around it. But um, the last day, or so she's been laying on her own pillow and mm-hmm. laying out, stretched out like a purse that she has to be covered up to. Oh. And she tells me so. And she's been laying out, and she's sick, too, because I'm sick. Well, Muffin, we, we call her Nurse Cat whenever I stay home from work, and I'll open the bedroom door. Oh, so she come Elliot. In. She, she, oh, uh, she will come and lay with me like she knows something's wrong, because if I'm there during the oh, day, yeah, that's not normal. Down. But she, she comes and lays on me. That The day I had the kidney stone, I came home from work in the middle of the day, she came and laid on me, like, right where it was hurting. I didn't know how she knew that. It's like she's trying to help me push it out. But uh, she knows when I'm sick. So. Oh, yeah, animals sense mm-hmm. that. They know. Did you know that cats purring, the reason why they purr, they heal their own cells with the mm-hmm. purring, and it's not anything science has been able to manage. Well, when, when I beat on her, they lay on she purrs. Purring, they're um, trying to heal you. I've heard I've that. I've that. heard that. Um, it's the frequency. And we have, like, Muffin's kind of like a Fifty Shades of Grey cat. Like, <laughs> she likes it when you pat on her, but really hard, like almost beating her. Just not quite beating her, but, like, she was standing on my lap, and I was really beating her like a set of bongo drums around her tail and her back end and her hips. And oh, I stopped, okay. and I stopped, Elliot's and she turned like around and looked it deep into my eyes like, oh, yeah. And I'm like, okay, now this is getting freaky. I can't get off me, Fifty Shades of Grey Cat. And, but she was purring so hard when I did that, like, she couldn't get enough. I'm oh. like, you're a freak. Get off me. <laughs> it, it's in so Elliot, it's the same way. The harder you pet him, the more he likes it, and the louder he purrs. Oh, and he'll even chirp. Okay, I'm getting the so I'm getting the sign. Elliot and Muffin like it rough. Okay. Yeah, I'm getting the sign, ladies. That okay. we kind of have to wrap it up, but we're ecstatically Aww. happy you both called in because you mean a lot to us. You, you're part of the OG crew, the original gangsters, base yeah. cadets. So yeah, hopefully you'll stick with us. Yeah. Maybe we'll get some oh, yeah. more content, interesting things coming out. Hopefully more guests before the end of the year, and um, just stick with us, and uh, we'll see you again next week hopefully okay Space everybody watch my twitter at once my storage room is complete i'm going to send pictures off of my home storage i i'm going really big with the prepper business oh, oh. awesome maybe we should interview her. yeah yeah so i'm going to start sending off pictures too? yes i'm still making soaps and they sell quite a bit it Good. really took off the beginning of this year, so. Oh, great. Yeah. Oh, great. Well, we'll be looking yeah. for that. Maybe we can learn something about, you know, prepping and whatnot. Well, sometime, if you want to do a show on that, let me know ahead of time, and we'll arrange it, and I'll make sure I call in and give give you guys my 
brainiac, you know what to that stuff. Good. It's a good thing to know because cool. I'm thinking it's it's going to happen that we're all going to have to fend for ourselves. And anybody that knows me knows I like doing things practical. So I don't like, you know, tell people, go out and buy this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, yeah. no, do it. Do it in the way it makes sense. Okay. Well, you good. Know. We'll we'll look forward to that. We'll be watching, and we'll find a time for you to slip you in there. And um, yeah. it sounds good. We thank you both okay, for calling thanks. in. Love you thank both. you for letting us have a three-way. Oh, yeah. It was time. It was past four noon. Way. <laughs> yeah, four-way. Four-way okay. with Space Boy. You know, I was just. Boy, I, we love you. Oh, I love you too, we ladies. Love you. Oh, I appreciate it. Uh, yes, I love you. <laughs> okay. I love all three of you. All right, give Aww. Dean give Dino a big hug for me. The dog. I will. All right. And oh. Elliot too. It, well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, ladies. Bye, both of you. Bye. Good night, Bye. guys. Love you all. <laughs> bye bye. There we go. All right. OG Space Cadets. So we're winding down here. Uh, um, next week, uh, surprisingly, we don't have a show uh, lined up for. I mean, I we, mean, we have a sh- we'll it's going to be there. Show. As the topic isn't there yet. Yeah, the topic isn't there yet. But uh, as always, you'll find out what that show will be in the next couple of days, and it'll be out in our social media uh, promotion extravaganza um, bonanza. And you know, and uh, but uh, and let me just do this for K twenty eight. I hope you're listening, K twenty eight. There you go. There's the uh, goat. I did it earlier today. There's the goat again. Um, uh, I'm probably going to call the goat Star Wars. Oh, God Almighty. <laughs> so, um, but, uh, as we finalize uh, the last things, um, are you ready for season three? Is this season three now? Yeah, we're in season three oh, now. Oh, well, it's technically four years we've been doing this, right? Technically four years, All yes. right, all right. Like, if you had to put it on a resume, it would be four years, right? Yeah. Four years of experience. Uh, four years of experience. Three years solid. <laughs> okay. Well, like I said, it's been four years. I don't know if I've gotten any better. I'm not a professional. I didn't take any courses or lessons or schooling to learn well, to do this. Well, you didn't this. go to the School of Columbia Broadcasting? No. Um, I was suckered into this, and I can't get out. So there you go. Hmm. Gene, you're trying to start something, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I already did that earlier, Gene. Hashtag Star Wars. Um, but, um, yeah, so uh, in, as the week uh, progresses uh, into next Saturday, um, just know that, uh, you know, I'll probably be doing a Star Wars video solo. Uh, not Han Solo, but uh, or Han Solo. Meaning alone without me. Mm-hmm. Without her, so she doesn't have to lose her wig over me talking about Star Wars. Like I said, if I had my own broadcast, well, I wouldn't tell anybody about it. Mm-hmm. I, I like how I you would actually do a broadcast. And then put own. it out there, and if you happen to stumble across it and find it, awesome. But it'll just be me talking about what I want to talk about. Which no one else is interested in except my former co-host, who's too busy. Uh, former co-host? Oh, that's right. Yeah. I was like... Wait, I'm still here with you. She's she's the only one that gets that, gets, gets, gets you? all that. Yeah. Well, th- those things that I'm passionate about that you don't know or care about. Well, how am I supposed to know if I like stuff that you don't tell me? Well, you don't read them, so, you oh, know. Oh, you mean books? Books and, yeah, articles and fiction and. I mean, I, I don't read the Harlequin romance novels. I don't read those either. <laughs> But um, uh, you know they're uh, they're not pre- they're not that heavy on uh, Kindle. Okay. So anyway, um, you know, um, uh, find uh, uh, find us on the universe. That is that spaceboyuniverse dot com, and uh, look for us on our YouTube channel, Space Boy Universe, and for more content. And as always, uh, subscribe, click that bell. <laughs> And uh, get notified when new content is available. And on that magical note, let's get out of here, Sir Lana. Okay. We love you, Space Cadets. Don't change. Thank
Space Boy Universe is hosted by Space Boy and Sir Lana. Executive producer is Sir Lana. Associate producer is Lee Ann Cordes. Music production is Space Boy of SpaceBoyMusic.com. Special thanks goes out to Lee Ann K. K28, Dino, Solars Blue Raven, Patrick Spurrier, Bob and Beverly N. This has been a Space Boy Universe production. Support the universe by exploring Space Boy Universe with Space Boy and Sir Lana. Sweet Dreams Space Cadets. You are listening to Space Boy Universe on the PAUK Radio Network.